thing on my end. So let me, will, will I hear you on, uh, uh, basically, hello. Can you hear me? Is it clear? It's loud and clear. Yeah. Yep. Everyone. Is my screen visible? Beautiful. Which one do you see yep. now? ZBrush? Uh, all right, that's good. I lost you, John Mark. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. What happened? All right, beautiful. Uh, probably the hurricane. That's coming. Oh, hurricane is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in the basement? <laughs> I wish I had one. I'm in an apartment. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. You're in an apartment. Well, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, isn't it safer in an apartment comparing to a house when a hurricane comes? Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You're yeah, I guess. Safer. I guess there are 34 people watching. Should we wait one more minute for everyone to join? Maybe we can have 35, uh, 35 yeah, already. Yeah. Maybe we can have 36 no. already. Yeah, we, we can, we can uh, wait a minute. No, let's wait a minute because we might hit 40. <laughs> yeah, and then more than likely people will um, jump in and out during yeah, yeah, the entire fine. thing. That makes sense. I'm, I'm also recording it on my end as well. Is it? I don't know. I hit the record button on this. This conference okay, no, will now be recorded. Okay, I started recording on uh, this app as well for you guys. Right. Thirty-nine. See, I told you it's gonna hit forty. Wait, forty. That's it. Exactly on a spot. <laughs> 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 Three p.m. Forty people. All right, so. We can talk about this. I wish we, there was a way to um, basically draw on the screen because I have a lot of like, I wanted to talk about um, about the shapes on this character, like the the design and, you know, things like that. Because to me, this is the best um, like sculpture I made in pose and uh, design wise, you know. Um, so welcome, Darren. Glad that you're here. There's like 40 people watching. Do you have any specific question, John, that you want to ask, or I can just go? Hey, you could just go for it. Okay, so basically when I wanted to design this creature, I see a lot of like artists, they try to design a character and they just go like pick a piece and like look at some references and start sculpting without any direction, without any plan, without knowing what they want to do. They just want to make a detailed character with a lot of like you know, a skin detail like this, you know, um, um, you know, like nice shapes at a horn or whatever. Right. But what I wanted to make this, um, I was like, um, this is actually me, right. During the time that I was going through a lot of pain. Okay. And I wanted to make something to be different than everything I did in my portfolio. So when I started sculpting this guy, I was like, maybe I should make a demonic character who has a lot of anger and uh, so how can i design that right and it's not necessarily just a it's a it's not it's not necessarily a negative character negative creature you know what i mean so when i decided to to design this um actually i want to say thanks to vitali borgar because he gave me some really good tips for designing at the time i asked him for some help and um when i spoke to him he changed my mind about design and how to approach design so um, to get this character look good, um, I needed to actually come up with a lot of, um, sharp shapes, right? Like triangles, sharp edges, because that's what makes a character, um, when you have a lot of sharp edges, it makes a character to, to feel more aggressive. Obviously it depends on the context, right? Like what type of character you're making, but, um, in general, like adding sharp edges and triangles makes a character more aggressive. And then I wanted to make it more natural as if like this could exist in nature you know so maybe it's it right. should be a human being 
but not a human being. It's a mix of human being and something else with a tail. Uh, I came up with a tail on the way because I felt like the design doesn't have the, it didn't have the balance without the tail. So if I ignore, ignore the tail, it would be weird, you know, without it. So if you look at this, uh, let me actually take a screenshot to show you what I mean about the triangles. I wish I could draw on the screen. So this character has a lot of triangles on it. Okay, on the composition of the character. Okay, all of these are individual triangles. Okay, and then there is like, if you look at it everywhere, you know, um, the form of, form of the arm, like even, even this could be a triangle, not that, sorry, not to draw on this. Um, maybe that could be a triangle. Maybe this is a triangle, you know, the form of the body, um, you know, um, if I, if I turn around, you will see that everywhere, this shape, um, uh, this shape, right? The shape of the deltoid, like the way it's positioned, this shape, right? Do you see that Mark? I do. I do. So I had to come up with something to make it aggressive all over the place. It's not just about the details. Um, um, uh, I came up with the idea of like adding these horns on the back uh, on the way because I wanted to make him more aggressive. So if you look at it from the, from top view, I mean, it's kind of like as if like if you touch this guy, it's gonna cut your finger, right? It's 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 like a flower. So all of these are like um, based on nature. Like um, what do you call the, the the these spiky things on the flower? I forgot the name. Thorns. Yes, yes, thorns. So these are actually, I was like, maybe I can add some thorns on it, right? Like these ones, you see? Um, so I, I got inspired by nature. And if you look at his, his horn, it's like a tree bark, right? Um, I had to sculpt all of this one by one, okay? And same thing here, same thing here, all of these. Like it's it's like a, I was like, maybe it's, it's like a tree, the skin of the tree, right? It's like dry and, and um, like the front of the face, like you see, it's like a lot of sharp edges. So it makes him like an aggressive character, especially with the, with the teeth, with the long teeth. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is the composition of like the forms that come together to make a character look good. Is basically, um, you know about the Fibonacci sequence, right? Uh, Anna, can you please uh, mute yourself? Yeah, I hear a lot of traffic. What if she's not there? Okay, should I go ahead? Yeah, keep going. So, yeah, I mean, the other thing is about the Fibonacci sequence, right? I mean, the, uh, this basically, let's say, let me actually take a screenshot again from this. You know, about like this thing, the Fibonacci like the golden ratio, right? Hey, uh, CMAC, it's Ryan here. Hey, um, Ryan, how's it going? Great, how are you? Good, good, thank you. Yeah, awesome to have you here. Thank you, man, same. Glad to be here. With um, you. So I was just uh, going to pop in on, since you're the organizer, I think. Yes. Uh, there's a button that says mute all. Oh, mute all. Click that, because Dupree's coming in right now, and he may not even have headphones on and realize he's coming in oh okay so uh, if i mute all then uh john is going to be unmute uh everybody can unmute themselves oh okay great so i'm gonna mute now one two three it's muting everyone all right there we go yes great there perfect go. all right okay. so anytime you have problems just do that real quick because sure. somebody might accidentally unmute themselves sure thanks ryan thanks yeah sure Thanks, Ryan. Um, so let me actually give you some, like, this is a very important um, note that people forget about when working on a character. When you look at human body anatomy, everything is based on uh, golden ratio. It's everything in nature is actually like that. Okay. So when you look at the, the distance of the deltoid, like the size of the deltoid from top to bottom, it's, uh, it's almost like the same as the biceps, right? And it's almost like half of the, it's hard to see it on this, this character, but it's almost like half of the forearm, okay? And the size of the hand, the ratio of the size of the hand is 
one like half of this so if you look at if you draw a straight line from here to here um let me actually clean this up if you draw a straight line from here to here um the ratio is like you see it's like one third right mm -hmm. so when i started paying attention to this i was actually able to design better like make characters look better like make smarter decisions like where the tail direction goes um like how should i do the top view you know um the flow of the the shapes uh and i think everyone is doing it in a different that's composition right so when you pay attention to the mathematics like the order the mathematical order it's actually making your job easier as a designer as a character artist as an artist in general it's the same with music if you know what i mean so music has the same type of um, um order so let me actually show you something else like here oops right there like for example this arm um look at the distance here right to here that's one third do you see that so in nature like everything is based on golden ratio right like if you put three dots like this it's it's so like organized and together and everything right but um, when, you, when you design a character, for me, it's like this. I actually pay attention a lot to this. When I put a detail here, actually, the next one is like this, and maybe one of them is like bigger. I try to make a different variation, and then I put a bunch of small ones. So I use the, the, the golden ratio or Fibonacci sequence or whatever you call it, and for the distances, for the size of the um, details, size of the muscles, and, you know, different variations. Does it make sense so far? It does. It does. Yeah, and, and it's actually one of the important things that, that actually artists don't really pay attention to. Um, so that's the the thing that I wanted to mention first. The other thing, like I started working on this character. Let me show it to you. You saw it already. Um, let me change the background to see the colors better. So I'm, I'm making this for a 3D print. Um, I, I just I think I spent like a couple of days on this in total like I made the body, upper body first I put a video on my YouTube channel just for this one about like how I sculpted the upper body my approach to it and then I decided to do the lower part finish the legs add, I added the tail um, when I sculpt I actually look at um, every angle like I check like for example I go on top of this and then I'm sure this is a separate piece I need to transfer this one so I actually take care of the, like, look at the view and try to make it good from every position, every angle. You know what I mean? So, um, do you have any questions that I can answer? No. So, let me see, let's look in the chat. No questions yet. No questions. Yeah. Uh, I'm starting to go to the ratio thing, to be honest with you. <laughs> to which? Golden ratio. Oh. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I'm still stuck on the golden ratio thing when it comes to doing art to, to apply it to composition. Uh, you have a question about that or you want to sorry I, I didn't understand what you're saying i have a question on uh, the sure. golden ratio how do you apply it to your art uh well that's the same thing so um i mean looking at this guy okay um that's what i try to use like the p p position of the the head position of the body that's the size of the head comparing to the rest of the body um like position of the leg you know uh, for example, like when I was tr making the, the tail for this guy, um, I was trying to basically look at it from every angle. I actually have to adjust it now. But um, like, for example, I don't push this like in the middle. This doesn't look good to me. So if I have a rotation on this, I actually try to do it on the one third of it. If that makes sense. It's the same thing for, uh, this is not done yet, but I'm still like trying to figure out um, the right, um, basically uh, pose for this guy but that's what i do like i try to um look at the um, look at everything and compare the size of things together compare the position of it how is it rotated on the character you know um, and then 
that's how I use it basically. So um, the golden ratio to me is like this. Let me show you. As I said here, like um, you need to pay attention to the size of the things. Um, and then the more you do it, you start with a simple thing and then but the more you do it, it becomes better. Like even in photography, like you have this frame on the camera, right? On the, when, you, when you take a picture, you divide it by three. And then if you want to take a picture of a person, you put the face here or you put the eyes here and then the face is covering the whole like um, frame. And then the center of the camera is like basically the, uh, the, the place that you pay attention to or these places or it's actually one turn on this section as well. So if I take a photo, I would put the eyes on these two. You know, I'll, I would put my, more attention here. Does it make sense? Yeah, I kind of get it. It's like you put like points, like interest points in certain areas in the yes. composition, I guess. Exactly. That's yeah. why I'm, okay. Same thing with Thank this you. guy. Like this is this could be improved. So I mean, if I look at the silhouette here, I don't see his right uh, left <laughs> arm, right? Because it's it's kind of lost. From this angle is good, but you don't see his. Uh, I mean, you can see there's something going on. So that's why silhouette is important. Like I could potentially like push his arm back uh, to have like a, a negative space. Uh, maybe it, it may not be possible, but the negative space is actually very important when you design a character. Look at this. I mean, this looks interesting to me when I look at it. Maybe I could improve the tail a little, a, a little bit, you know? So, I mean, I see a lot of artists. I'm not the best at it. I'm just, I'm, I'm still trying to get better at this and understand how to use it properly. But I think over time with practice and um, uh, trying different different variations, you will you will get better at it. Easy. I mean, and every time you do a new piece, you, you can do it better and better. So a lot of times you, you may not be able to exactly make it look good on every angle because it's hard to make it look good on every angle. Uh, but I, I try my best like as much as possible, you know. And then there is always that angle that um, is always like look the best, you know. Um, so this character I just started recently, as I said, I'm still trying to, um, basically work on it and, um, you know, uh, make the, make the position, uh, basically pose him better, maybe push the legs and I don't have a reference for it. I just look at different references, um, and then try to build this. Let me actually see. There's a question. I have a question regarding memory management and performance. What methods do you use to run the game smoothly and crash proofing the game? Well, I'm not a, um, basically, I'm not a programmer, but the thing you can do, because I was lead character artist at Soccer Punch, I worked on Ghost of Tsushima. Um, one of the things that I did was working closely with with the, one of the engineers, like he was the lead engineer, and we actually had to work a lot on, on managing memories, right? That's That's actually with every studio. Like when you work on a game, there's memory management, there's performance management, right? So performance is about like how many polygons you have on the screen at the same time. Memory is about how many characters are loaded into the memory, how many polygons are loaded into the memory at the same time. Two, there are two different things. And you need to find a balance between, um, when you make a character, like a low poly character, you need to find a balance with be, between um, performance on the screen and memory. And basically, um, um, there's like um, this method that the studios use are using. I don't know how it's done. I just know the name, uh, texture streaming and geometry streaming, which is basically only loading the, the pieces that you see into the memory. So if this character is not uh, in the screen, then it's not in, in the memory. Like if it's not in the, sorry, if it's not in the, in that level that you're playing, then it's not loaded into the memory. It loads only when you, when you basically are going to face that, that character and, you know, or, um, so one of the things that people should keep in mind when they work on a character for games on the low res is basically when you load a when you, let's say you have a hunt you have an enemy f uh, that which has like hundred fifty thousand polygons okay let's say that's that's the polygon I'm just dropping or maybe hundred thousand just to make it easier to understand and then let's say um, this is an enemy and then you will see like five of them at the same time in one scene and there is no other enemies. And there is you, uh, uh, which is your character, player, and that enemy, right? So essentially, it's only uh, the the game is only loading one character for the enemy and one character for the player into the memory, right? If there is five of those characters in the screen with one hundred thousand polygons, then 
it shouldn't be a problem depending on how complicated the environment is. And um, uh, performance wise also should be okay because GPUs are really powerful these days. But if they turn that into like, I don't know, instead of five character, if they make it 50 character, that might become a problem. Or if they make it 5,000, if it's an army, then that's going to be a problem performance wise, not memory wise. Because you're seeing a lot of polygons at the same time in, in the same scene. Uh, that's one thing. And then um, I hope that answers the question for that. I mean, geometry streaming is actually very important. There is another question earlier. Uh, what can you tell us about the course? I'm, uh, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Could you show an example of the actual math you may be doing? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Do you guys understand that question? Could you show an example of the actual math you may be doing? Can you, I don't know, John, can you hear me? I have a question about memory. I answered that one. For example, one character has wings. I used a feather wing image with alpha transparency. With that one feather, I made a wing through particle system. Yeah, that's that's a way to do it as well. I have a question about game-ready character creation. What is your method when it comes to starting creating a character? Do you do a low poly? block out base and then a sculpt the details on top of the sort of brush and first and then uh so when you want to make a character first thing is um making the primary shapes that is the first thing you need to start the sculpting uh basically put the character can together can you hear yeah i can hear you what happened hello i'm missing you um so the workflow for to make a character, I actually made a video about this for, on my YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys watch watch that. I can send you a link. Uh, John, should I put a link here for that? Because I go into depth, into detail to, on that video. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Let me actually put it now if people want to check it out after. Because that's like a general pipeline about how characters are made for video games. Um, but I'm going to answer it here now, just besides that one. So, one second, I'm just going to grab the link. The other question I didn't understand, how do you calculate the math? I'm not sure what that I think means. he was referring to the, the golden ratio. Uh, and, it's just uh, like, it's just, sequence. yeah, I'm not really like looking at it that way. It's not that complicated for me. I just look at it. I'm like, if it's looking good or not, and that's it. And it comes with practice. I just know that the Fibonacci sequence has like um, um, one, three, five, seven, nine. That that's the numeric, right? It goes all the way, and then that's actually exists in music as well. Like when I play chord, it's one, one, and three, and the fifth um, key. Like if if I play it, it's this is not related, but I just want to tell you guys that there's this is actually everywhere. One, three, five, seven, right? Uh, in music, actually, there's a chord progression like one, three, five, seven. Um, or one three five one. There's a chord progression like that, and there is a reason that it happens. It repeats a lot in the uh, in the nature and in, in everything basically. Uh, I just posted the link in the in the chat. I think they were referring to the gold ratio. There's a lot of chat. It's hard to keep keep up with it. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, j just keep going, and and we'll. Um... Yeah, so I wanted to over it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I wanted to explain about um, sh um, one of the questions was like the character workflow. That video actually explains everything. If you guys watch that, I put it in the, in the chat. But basically what you need to do, like when I started this character, I was basically, um, let me actually load the earlier version. If I wanted to design this, um, when I started this, it was like this. It's just that, very simple, nothing, right? Uh, I had an idea and I wanted to just put the forms together. And when I block out something, I just block out simple shapes. There's nothing complicated. And the best way to do it is like to get rid of all of these, um, like put everything together as fast as you can so you can have something in place to start adding the, the main primary shapes, the important shapes, and then secondary shapes and then tertiary shapes, details and everything, right? So that was that's how I started this. and. I usually sculpt like I start with a sphere uh, and then I, I put the neck pieces like this is a cylinder that I just put it together 
and then I, I put a bunch of other cylinders just for the external clidomastoid muscle, which is uh, this neck muscle, right? And then for the trapezius, it's just like a simple shape, quickly blocked out together to just cover up that uh, shape and then connect it to the scapula and the, you know, you know clavicle, um, basically, and then here to the, uh, well, it's not this, it shouldn't be here. This muscle is actually going all the way, but I needed something to cover the gap. So, um, and then I just put a simple shape, like, clavicle shape so everything is very basic very simple there's nothing complicated about it because i want to um get rid of the the boring tasks like doing the the things that doesn't matter much it's actually important like shape wise is important but this is like uh, not fun right i just want to put something block out something to to have something to work with and then uh, if i go a bit further uh like let's say five let's say a couple of hours after or three hours after i came up with this like i put the horns i actually have a video about this how i i sculpted this and it's the same workflow but the thing is like when you when you when you work for games um you need to work closely with um what do you call it um for you need to work closely with the concept artists because at the end of the day if you're a concept character designer then that's a different question if you're a concept designer and sculpting then you have to do, it every, do everything yourself. But if somebody's doing the concept and there's art director in the studio, you need to work with those people and get direction from them. So usually for something like this, if let's say I wanna do this, right? I mean, let's say this is a statue in a game, right? Or, or it's gonna be a full character eventually. Or actually, let me load another character to give you a better example because it's in T-pose. Might be easier to show you guys um, in a better way. Because I have armors and everything on this one that I'm going to load now. <sighs> Sorry, just give, give me a second until it loads. It's a heavy file. Heavy file. Basically, you need to block out something simple. Make sure that everything is together. Like if there's armors, you can put the armors together. Um, basically, um, well, okay, load it. Let me show you guys. So this character, I actually made part of the lowers in ZBrush as well. I have a video for this one as well. If you guys want to check it out. Um, so, I mean, first I, I did a quick block out of this guy on the whole thing. Like everything was a block out. Even the shoulder pieces was block out, nothing complicated. And I actually did a lot of changes on this guy to, to come to this uh, direction. Um, I have another example. Um, hold on a second. Which is more like a, more like a block out. So the first thing you need to do is like do a block out and make sure that the proportions are correct. Everything is, is in place. Concept is like it's matching the concept, the type of armors. Like if there's a concept, the concept has these, um, if the concept has these armors, you don't need to put the stitching and things like that, right? You can just put a simple, um, very simple armor. Like I could even dynamish this to show you how simple it is. Um, I hope it doesn't crash. Oh, this is actually a big dynamo. I mean, yeah, it doesn't work. This is big geometry. But uh, it could be a very simple piece, like just a bunch of stuff, right? You want to block out the whole thing as soon as, as, pa as fast as possible, but um, something that, um, to have something to, to have the proportions in place, the overall look of the character, the overall like armor pieces that you want to make. I need to hide these. This shouldn't be here. Um, and, then, and then after that, once it's approved, you can send that model like a simple zero measure. Like you could just grab this piece, right? And then you could, um, like, even even I'm gonna do it on a belt because it's faster. Um, you could just zero mesh it quickly, and then after you zero mesh it, when you zero mesh everything, you have a very simple geometry that you can send it to rigging team to actually start the rigging. They can test it out, figure out the problems, the 
range of motion and, and things like that. And it doesn't matter if the geometry is not good, if it's not matching, um, like the poly budgets or things like that, it doesn't matter. Once you do that, usually when, it, when it's approved, even if it's not approved, you can move forward once the look of the character is approved by the concept team or art director or whoever is responsible, you'll move forward and finish the character. And, and uh, most of the time, as far as I know, rigging team, tech team will come back to you with some requests to change the position of the armor or change the position of like um, forearm armor. And um, then you will do those changes and then once it's approved, you will start working on the lowers. Uh, once the lowers is approved, then you will do the UVs. Um, and then actually once you do the UVs and baking, you can already give the lowers to, to the rig rigging team or the tech team to start the final rigging process. Because uh, if they have the bakes, baked maps, like normal maps, curvature map, things like that, they can actually see the stretches on the textures when they're uh, basically working on the rigging and the skinning. And then you can, at the same time, you can do the texturing in the Substance Painter or whatever software you use. So is that clear, John? I hope that answers the question. I think uh, we have a couple questions. Yeah. And before, before we get to the questions, uh, I started this robotic character like a year ago. And I actually gave it to Mike Nash to give me some feedback. I'm going to change it again. This was just a practice. And this is a concept, right? I mean, I was just concepting something. The forms are just loose. There's no detail, nothing, right? Because I'm trying to make up uh, the idea before I, I do anything. And I, and I look at it now. I'm glad that I didn't go too far because at the time, I didn't understand much about robotic characters. But now I have a better understanding. So if I get back to this, I'm going to change it completely. So I'm going to change this. I might actually remove this piece as a whole like it looks better without that right um and a bunch of changes that that mike actually mike nash i don't know if you guys know him he he was uh, giving me some um feedback on the robot because he's, he's really good at designing and concepting robots um so knowing all of these things i can now get back to it and refine the shape refine the characters and come up with um, something better before i move to the high res and finish the high res if that makes sense so yeah, ask questions, John. I'm going to drink something quickly. Hello. Can you hear me? To deal with posing the character with cloth, do you make them in Apple's? Then he has marvelous hair. I actually pose everything in ZBrush. So if I have to pose a character in ZBrush with cloth, I would actually pose the character first uh, and then put the cloth in Marvelous. Uh, or maybe I would make the cloth pattern on the T-pose and then pose the character and then adjust the cloth pattern in, Z in Marvelous to match it to the pose and then, and then bring it to ZBrush again. Uh, Yes, the stream will be saved. Uh, do you merge all the clothing and capes or you can set them? If, if you're working for a game character, you don't need to merge anything at this point. It's like, it's actually better to keep it separate. So let's say I'm, I'm making this character, right? On this character, everything is separate. His head is separate, his body is separate. And this, this will actually, I, have, I will have UDIMs for this guy. Head, body, um, arm, hands. Uh, upper leg, lower leg, and feet, or maybe I can adjust it and just have legs and feet. And then I'll have um, like skirt, these will be one UV, these are, um, boards or whatever wooden pieces, there will be one one piece of like texture and UV. Um, this These shoulder pads will be one piece. Um, this one is its own piece. I'll put the ropes in one UV texture sheet. Um, I'll put these in one, one UV. And then these are also separate. And then depending on the size of them in the screen, I'll adjust the texture size. The head might have 2K, shoulder pads might be 1K, body might be 2K, uh, and like that basically. So, um, yeah. Any other questions should I answer? Um, yeah, let's keep going and, and we can check back in, in a couple minutes. Yeah, I mean, there's one question. I, I don't know, maybe I should answer that. Is it okay? 
Yeah, go for it. Go it for says, it. so in your experience, sending a zero emission model to rigging is an okay thing to get a basic idea from them. Yes, that's totally okay. And you shouldn't spend time when you are blocking out a character, you shouldn't spend time on um, really simple, um, um, make technical stuff, because that's a waste of time. That's a throwaway piece of work. You just give it to riggers, they find a way. And Zero, Zero Machine is actually doing a good job recently. You don't get the details like, like the eyes or lips, but the overall uh, flow, you will get a good flow. If I Zero Mesh this guy, it will have like really nice loop around the arms and around the legs, and that's good enough for riggers to test everything. And after that, you go back and do the actual retopo by hand. Yes, once you finish the whole character, you can actually do the whole retopo by hand. I actually made a video about this. Uh, if you guys check my YouTube channel um, on the live section, I, I actually answered some questions about that. But um, you can actually you can actually do a mix of, um, let's say, Topocon or 3D Code or Maya, whatever application you're using to do the Lores. Or you could also do some of it in, in ZBrush, actually. Like I did these uh, pieces in ZBrush. This is actually a ZBrush Zero Measure. And because at this point, for this character, it's a personal work. I don't care if it's like too high res. I could make it more low res, like merge some of these, make it more low res. But I didn't want to spend time and put polygons one by one by hand and waste time on something that doesn't really matter. So I made this in ZBrush. That's a zero measure, and that's pretty cool. And I can use, uh, you know, ZModeler, for example. That's why I like ZBrush, because it's, it's not limited. I can use... Um, Z modeler and collapse some of these polygons that I don't need. Look at that, right? Or I could collapse just one edge like that, then collapse the loop. Actually, no, not like that. I need to remove this. I use Z modeler a lot. Have you used it, John? I don't know if you use Z modeler. I don't I actually don't use it too often. Oh, it's very cool. It is very cool. Gives you a very good uh, base to, um, not a base, but it's a good, good, good um, tool basically. But you see, if I want to make it more lowers, I can even do it in ZBrush. You can do it in Maya. It's actually I would do that in Maya because I can do it in like two minutes the whole thing. Like I can fix it. Um, so that's a quick idea about the whole character thing. I mean, I can. I don't know, do something else if you guys want. What do you think? I mean, you can sculpt something or um, or answer more questions or what do you prefer? More Go ahead. Can, can you say that again? Oh, uh, me? No, no, I think someone was trying to yeah, chime in. something as well, yeah. Do those, do those approve. Create hair cards. From experience, you should go through months, two months of communication or does it? This is actually a very good question. People don't know how complicated character art is actually in a studio. So I get this question a lot. If you want to work in a game studio, the character that you work on is not done until the game is shipped. So you don't know one character could actually go through changes for years, could go through changes for two years until you ship it. Because people do something, then two, two months later, they see it in the game. They're like, no, maybe it doesn't work with the environment. Maybe the colors don't work, so we have to change it. So um, it really depends. But, there, but expect a lot of changes when you work on characters. It's not done until the game is shipped. This is actually very important. Unreal Engine 5 is not available yet, so we don't use it. Um, <clears throat> I have a question. Sure. Go for it. Um, about the character not being finished until the game is completed. Yes. How would you keep up with motivation? And yeah. if you're constantly in the same character and it's changes upon changes, what's your thought process and how would you actually deal with like just being stuck on one character for literally two years? Um, so here's the thing. You don't work just on one character for two years, right? But generally speaking, you work on one character at a time for at least two months, at least two or three months. So it is not easy. I can tell you that. That's why game development is something that people see the game, enjoy seeing it, like enjoy playing it and all that. And they think making it is the same. It's actually not the same. It's two different things. So the motivation comes from like, um, what do you see at the end? Well, 
There is actually a book called uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Uh, that's a very good book. It's always one of the habits is like always keep the end in mind. So if you want to motivate yourself, that's that's something like you need to look into the future. The moment that you're in may not be the most pleasant one, but two months from now might be actually more pleasant. That's one way. And, um, you know, um, the other thing you need to keep in mind, working in game studios or making working on a project for someone, a character for a studio or whatever, as a freelancer or an employee, it's a business. You're technically basically setting your skill set and getting paid for it. So you shouldn't expect to always do something that you enjoy doing, right? Unless if in your contract is like um, something specific, but usually studios hire you because they want to use your expertise to solve a problem. And if you solve that problem for them, they will, they will pay you, right? When you, and, and you need to keep, keep in mind this, this actually, it's very important. When you do a personal project, you're actually doing it for fun and it's different. You're just enjoying your moment. You're enjoying the process. Um, and there's no one to tell you exactly how to do it. And you do things out of your curiosity. Like you want to change because you're like, how, how is it going to look if I push this here or there, right? Uh, that makes it more fun. But when you're doing the job for someone else, for a studio or as a freelancer, you need to essentially follow their direction, right? I mean, I actually did jobs that I think they gave me terrible feedback and it wasn't fun at all doing it. It was wrong. They made the design look worse, but I did it because that's they're paying me for it and that's their project, right? And at the end, I'm not responsible if, um, if when they sell that product, if it's looking good or not. I'm only responsible if they, they tell me, hey, you're the character designer, you're the concept artist, make it look good. You know, that's the way I can actually decide how I can make things look good. And and many times I had freedoms in, in the job that I did. Like they didn't know they were like, our director was like, I don't know, this character looks weird. What is wrong? And I was like, maybe this is the jacket or maybe his pants are weird. I, I can see these kind of things. Do you want me to change it? I can change it and show it to you. And most of the time, because it comes from a different perspective, when I do those changes, uh, I actually never failed. Every time I did something, they came back, they were like, yeah, that looks better. Because you're the specialized person here. You're the character artist, right? So sometimes you need to give them direction. But other times it comes from the art director or concept artist, and that the changes might take actually months. So you only need to motivate yourself by like thinking about that you're going to finish this character. It's going to look good. Because if you constantly think negative about it, you're going to lose your patience, and then you will do the worst job you, you have ever done. And everyone will be upset at the end, right? And... And it's important, like, if you guys can go through those hard moments, anything else becomes easy. And it, it, it is rewarding because um, psychologically, you're accomplishing something that not many people can accomplish, if that makes sense. It's not an easy task. Making games is hard. Making characters for games is actually harder. So, and there are a lot of opinions, like art director gives you feedback, your teammates, they give you feedback. Um, sometimes environment artists, they come to you and give you feedback. You need to... Uh, understand which feedback to ignore and which one to to use. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, if it's helpful. Uh, oh, game... it's perfect. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. And then there's a question that says game engines are using Udim. Uh, yes. Uh, subs new Substance Painter is actually supporting Udim. So uh, let me see if there's an, any other questions. Maybe I can sculpt something. I don't know. Um, how do you guys, how do you get ZBrush to run smoothly? I mean, I don't know. I just, I mean, it's not actually smooth right now. It's heavy. I mean, right now my character, the one that I'm working on, this one is only 5 million polygons. Actually, that's a good question because I see a lot of artists, they make a character and they have like 200 million polygons on a character. This is 5 million polygons. I don't need more than 5 million at this point. Maybe I can subdivide it one more time and you know, to add the muscle fibers. I can actually, actually, it's, it's actually going to be more than 5 million. Let me see. Oh, it's, this one is 89 million, sorry. That was like 5 million. But this is actually what you sh where you should start. Like with, um, with the low, like this is good for primary shapes. It's actually more than enough for primary shapes. And then when you get to details, like if you want to add some muscle fiber, you know, like add the chest muscle, something to make it more interesting. You know, 
Um, some of the details I'm actually like only using the surface noise. Sometimes I just use this because um, I don't want the details to be um, basically to be projected on the model. So I just use surface noise. Let me show you something. This is a cool trick that can actually trick your mind if you if you are craving for details, but you don't have to actually project the details. So I can have the illusion of detail just to feed my mind, right? And have a um, have an idea of what it's going to look like and then a sculpt on top of that by just keeping the noise, right? Instead of having two million, uh, 200 million polygons, if that makes sense. So yeah, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do on this guy. I don't know, do you guys want me to sculpt something on this? Uh, what do you think, John? I can w work on this and show you what I would look for when I sculpt. Let me see if there's an important question. What are some things that you are, that things that you do to make it run smoothly? You just need to manage your polygons. And uh, the other thing I wanted to say, actually, I forgot it. Um, usually, this is actually a good question. Again, I didn't answer everything. For this character, I had the tail as a separate piece, right? And I had the body as a separate piece. Basically, this is the body. It was a separate piece. And then I, I basically merged it together using the Z modeler, connect them together, and then project the details back. Uh, in the beginning, I actually made the upper body separate, head was separate, legs were separate. So when you have the, poly, uh, the different part of the body as a separate geometry, it makes it easier to um, to basically what do you call it like control the polygons because because when you have millions of polygons on one single geometry uh, it's going to use more memory and um, CPU I guess for some reason it becomes heavier so you can keep your models separate and then um, merge them together and project at the end uh, let me see more questions different methods for robots compared to humanoid too many parts what if you have to work on cyber just curious about your thoughts I never actually worked on cyber characters but it's the same process like um, I eventually I see everything I'm not the best for hard surface design by the way like there are artists like um, Idon Gorazio um, Vitaly Bulgarov or Mike uh, Andrew Nash. Mike Nash is actually amazing. All of them are, all, all of these guys that I mentioned are amaz amazing. Fosso De Martini, if I say his name cor correctly. Um, they're very good at designing uh, this kind of thing. But if you're, a, if you're as a character artist, if you're making a robotic like part, then I would do it the same way. I would actually first, um, I mean, let's say, let's say, let's say, let's try something here. I'm going to, I'm going to try to make a cough. Um, like a prisoner cough for this guy. Let me actually search uh, for a reference. I want to find something from the past. Let's say, let's say something like this. Let's say if I make this piece, just that. Um, I want to make it make it in ZBrush. Okay, I'll show you how I would do that. It's a it's a hard surface. And it's the same process for, for Cyborg, I would say. Like, um, if I get back to the Cyborg guy, this uh, robotic character that I started, I think. Is it this one? Yes. This is all in ZBrush. Like, I took a piece of uh, sphere. I started the sculpting stuff, just pulling and pushing shapes, you know, using the flat brush, just sculpting. Very, very simple thing, right? I mean, if I want to add something here, for example, like I could, um, let's say, let's say I want to, bring this piece, this part out. I'll show you this and then I'll show you how I would make a cough in ZBrush. Um, I could do that, right? I mean, and then dynamish it because it's dynamish and then make it flat, you know. It's the same process as making a character. It's just like it's hard surface. And for the hard surface, you need to understand some technical um, stuff like you need to understand how to use Z-Modeler for example right and I use a uh, clip brush a lot clip clip curve if I want to do something like this I use clip and I use um, for example damage standard brush like if I want to add something here uh, I don't know 
it's not a good thing that I'm trying to do now, but whatever. I'm just showing something. I would actually remove these. They don't look good. There's a video again on my YouTube channel. Uh, let me actually paste it here because that's like Mike Nash uh, sculpted something. That's pretty cool. Um, he actually took my model and then he worked on top of it um, to, to give me feedback basically, right? So I'll paste it here in the, in the chat. You guys can check that out. <sighs> Let me actually make a, make a piece of cough for, for this guy. I'm gonna just try to mask this. Right, and if I wanna make that, maybe I can look for some other references. Reference is actually super important, guys. Like I see people, um, um, some of my students, they actually, when, when they gather references, they actually grab a bunch of like two, three reference and that's it, which is wrong. You need to have a lot of references when you work on a character just from different angles, different ideas, uh, different shapes. Let's see. Oh, these are, there are different versions. I'm just gonna try something. I'm working on the Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, I don't know if I can say about Ghost of Tsushima. For me, that was a job, like any other job. Uh, but because I was lead there, my experience was I had to manage a lot of people, hire people, you know, check outsource work, um, basically um, do feedback, you know, make the pipeline. Um, Overall, it was good. Um, I, I mean, it was just like any other job. I don't know. Um, if you have any specific question about Ghost of Tsushima that I can answer, I will. But um, when you are lead on a project, you don't get to do much art. I did. I did art. I, I made a bunch of like hero uh, costumes, and hero armors, and Mongol armors. I actually like a lot, gave a lot of feedback. I sculpted over when we were like giving it to other team members or sending it to outsource teams. Um, and what else? Like I even worked closely with the art director or concept artist if there was an issue with the armor and things were not working in 3D because concept team usually make a concept and then they don't know the 3D side. When it comes to you, things may not work in 3D. So you have to work with them and come up with solutions, give them ideas. And because I did character design myself uh, in ZBrush, I sculpt and, you know, I make all of my character personal projects that I do is just my work. Like I don't follow any concept because of that I could, I could help a bit like on some ideas, like especially for Mongol armors, you know, I actually did a lot of changes on that to come up with a, with a nice armor basically. When creating eyebrows for your characters, do you typically texture them or on the no, eyebrows are separate. Right now, they're cards. You just use cards to make eyebrows. It's just like same hair, like any other hair workflow, right? If I take a screenshot here, I just want to show you, like you put a bunch of uh, hair cards, right, on, on one sheet, right? Let's say dance, let's say fly, fly by cards, and let's say like this. And then when you uh, work on the character, it's actually simple, to be honest. Let's say this is your poly, poly uh, card, right? This is one card, and you can use this in multiple areas. This is another one, right? I mean, you can use this in multiple areas. This is like fly, like, don't you know, those p hair pieces that I that are like flying like this. It's just random. One hair is out of, like, basically out of the group. Or if something you want on the edges, you know, things like that, you know. So you can use cards for everything, actually. Uh, I'm actually going to flex up your mesh. Uh, so, uh, let me actually quickly read this, and then I'm gonna show you how, guys how I would make a cuff in ZBrush. Okay. 
technically. Uh, when you make a personal portfolio, this is actually a very good question as well. I don't think you should think of, here's the thing, you need to do your best for yourself before applying for any job. If you can do the best for yourself, you will actually do it better than what the studio is expecting you to do. So if you have a good portfolio piece, then um, it's actually easier to get a job. And then when you get a job, do your best on that job. Even though it's not yours, do your best because if you put in your portfolio, if the result comes out, I mean, um, it's your work and then uh, you, you'll have a better chance to get other jobs, like a bigger job, more pay, different studio, trying out, you know, things, different things. So uh, I think the quality is super important. Like you don't need to have um, any, um, the technical part is important, but if you show that you can, you can do a really good quality work, then uh, you will um, basically make the best piece you can and then you will get a good job after that. So it's important to do a quality work. I'm just going to use this. Uh, so see what I'm going to do now. I just kept the edge outside and removed everything else. And then I'm going to go to deformation, smooth grouping. I'm going to actually do a quick zero measure on this. Maybe even less polygons. And then I'm going to go to deformation. Try that again, just smooth it out. Um, since it's a handcuff, I want to make sure it's clean. So I'm going to use Z modeler, delete some of these edge loops. One, two, three, I don't need those. And then I'm going to turn on the other side so you can so I can see what I'm doing. What I need to do first, I need to make this straight, like even, size-wise. Uh, make a straight line. Make it nice and clean. Right. Um, I don't know if it's, this is actually a good way to, but I'm going to show you now. I mean, it's okay. Everything is not going to be even, but I'll show you some. This actually can show you how you can do hard surface ZBrush. So this is a reference. When you're working on a character, there's a question, how many characters props are you responsible for? at a time when you're working in a studio one usually one sometimes it might be two because of the feedback because you might have to wait and then they will come back to you so if there is a if there's a delay like waiting then you will start maybe working on another another piece as well but the way ryan is this this program set let's turn off i do How many teams work on the creation of one character? Um, there is concept team, art director, character artist, sometimes outsource team, depending on the complexity of the character. Sometimes they outsource the low res, which is a technical thing. It's becoming more common these days that the studios outsource low res, uh, because the low res for game characters are becoming way more complicated than five years ago. So uh, that's actually time consuming. Then after that, uh you work with the concept team designers actually are part of it animation team is part of it they give you feedback if the motions are having issues and um, sometimes writers actually they they have a say about like the design of the character because it relates to the story um, character is actually you know it's the main focus of any game so it's the most important part if you don't pay attention to your character work in a game you don't have a good game and I think part of the reason Ghost is successful is because of the characters. That's part of the reason the game is like, everyone is like talking about it. The environment is beautiful. I liked the environment when I was working on it. But I mean, there's a lot of emotions on those characters, you know? So most of the resources, not most, actually it's different. Every part is hard. The environment actually has more. Uh, usually the environment team is actually bigger. Like if we don't consider the you know outsource teams but character work is not easy it takes a lot of time um hold on a second let me see the structure of this 
thing that's confusing to me. Okay, so that comes out. I need to focus a little bit, guys, so forgive me if I cannot talk for for a second. Because if I don't focus, I cannot make this. Hello. Uh, so Hi. I was just wondering if you could, uh, after, uh, show us some uh, character uh, uh, rating for, uh, for, for uh, um, uh, like, uh, games. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering if you could uh, show us some work, like how you guys do it uh, for, like, the AA titles. For what? Sorry? AAA, AAA titles. Okay, yeah. What do you want to know about that exactly? Uh, uh, rigging for uh, oh. uh, for those such games, like how rigging. how you guys do that? Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't yeah, I don't do rigging. <laughs> that's the problem. I, it's hard for me to say anything about it. But um, that's a tech team question. To be honest with you, um, are you looking to do rigging for games? Is that what you want to do? Uh, yeah, some like basics to, or like. Uh, uh, or so. Um, yeah, it's it's a question that I cannot really answer because if it's rigging, then I don't know anything about it. I just know the basic stuff. If you want to know, like, if you want to do rigging, then I don't know what to say about that. But I know about edge loops, how to put the edge loops to make the rig um, work easier with your character, you know, things like that. So um, that's a that's also a complicated question, to be honest with you. Like, um, rigging team usually the tech team is. Um, you actually work very closely with the tech team, you know. I can give you some idea, you know. I don't know about rigging, but I can give you some idea. Like, for example, um, if you have a bunch of characters like this guy, if you have a bunch of, let's say, let's say, let me open this one. Let's say you have, like, well, let's say you have ogres in the game like this guy, okay. Let's say you have like five different ogres, but they're the same size, same proportion. It's just like they look different. In that case, you just make one rig. And then they use that one rig to rig all of those characters. And then there's a lot of like similarities between characters. Like for example, in a game studio, all the heads, they are the same. Like the topology of the head will be the same. You know, like for example, if I'm, uh, if I have five ogres, I hope ZBrush doesn't crash. It feels like it's going to crash. No, it doesn't crash. Let's say they can use this topology for multiple characters. So the way we do it is like we make one face and use that geometry for all the all the faces, like all the similar faces. If it's not all, if they're not they're not all monsters. So rigging can actually transfer skinning. They can use the same rigging. They can use the same IKFK tools or whatever they make. It's just all of that are being used um, multiple times. And also that helps to save memory when you have the same rig, right? Usually the facial rig is the same for all the humans. Uh, sometimes the uh, male and female are different. Um, some games they're not, they're the same. But usually I think it's better to be different. And as far as I know, they make it different. Um, so does that help you? I don't know if that answers some of your questions. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Do, do you have any specific questions, like anything like, I don't know. Besides that, no. All right. So I want to make this cop quickly. Looking at the reference again, I need a piece on this side. I don't know how that piece is made. Maybe this can show me something. Okay. That looks like this looks like a good reference. These are strange cops. I never see these ones. Never saw them. Oh, okay. I think I can make it. Looks like a hinge here. So this is a good reference. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna just make it wider on the bottom part.
and then we have this piece let me actually duplicate this one because I want to make that piece as a separate piece I wouldn't make the hard surface in place like this. This is actually not good because it doesn't make it even. But in this case, because it feels like it's a, it's a historic piece, it's old, so it doesn't matter. Um, then I'm gonna extrude. I'm gonna extrude actually this one first uh, with Z modeler. I'm gonna put select. It. I, will, I will hover over the polygon. Uh, space extrude and then all polygons when I when you select that it's gonna extrude everything right so I'm extruding that um, the next thing is I want to extrude this piece okay actually and then how many references do you usually get a lot like from where from studios or myself uh, i guess both i mean a lot a lot in the studio actually they give you you can ask the concept artist who draws the concept to give you a reference sheet or call out sheet that's used for materials and reference but i usually like i don't even i like you saw like i had to look at a bunch of different piece to to, to find how it looks on the other side different references right so i think it's important to have as many references as possible even, even just for a small, simple piece like that. I actually like this more because it feels like it's, it's very cool. I like this shape the, the, that has an extra something here. So gotcha. more references better. Like you can see, I can see like on this one, I can see actually better how it is um, made, the structure of it. It actually feels thinner here. Like I made a mistake and I made it wider. So I need to, uh, I have never been a prison old policeman, so I don't know how it's made. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like that's um, that's an extra piece. So maybe I should, um, what I can do, I can do this. I can cut this from from the center. I can cut it into, oh, what? I can cut it like this. So this is like insert multi edge. And then when you click on an edge, you can drag the mouse and it's going to add edge loops. So for this guy, I don't need the edge loops in the middle. Okay, if that makes sense. What I can do, I can actually, you know what, I can actually extrude these in. It could be more realistic like that. Poly, poly group. Just extrude it in, like as if this is the piece that goes inside, right? And then... We want to make this round shape here. So for that, I'm gonna insert this one uh, edge loop. And then, see, it's interesting. I can do hard surface in ZBrush. You don't even even need to get into Maya if you're patient. For these kind of things, right? I mean, obviously, if you want to do something like Mike National or Vitaly Bulgarov, that's different because. Um, the the the, the like Mike Nash's work, workflow is different, but Vitaly uses Moe three D for example. That's that's a different application. I never use it for hard surface. I'm actually thinking to get into like um, hard surface design because I'm doing. I have done a lot of characters. I feel like I need to take a break from just making anatomy and characters. And I'm beveling this. I'm gonna put another edge loop in the middle. I want to show you guys that it's possible to do hard surface in ZBrush. It's not that hard. It takes more time, but it's okay. Uh, now I'm gonna close these edges. And uh, transpose is very cool. I still use transpose a lot. And now. I need to have this shape. Like this should be like that. So 
put another egg over there. Another egg over here. And then what I can do here is I can group these, these polygons only, and then I can extrude this poly polygroup, just that polygroup, because I want to make this this section. I can actually extrude it more. Maybe it's too long. It's very quiet. Do you guys have any questions? Anyone wants to pop in and ask stuff? What is the um, spot where we will enter in the in the in the course? Like, do we start with uh, concepting, or do we get a concept and uh, start mm. from there? And what's the expected result at the end of the ten weeks? Well. The thing is, I can show you guys um, my my workflow and my process, and sh show you your mistakes. And um, depends on how many people are in the class, I can pick a couple of work and show sculpt over and show the the problems and mistakes. Um, the idea is basically to show you the workflow and help you to to optimize your workflow and, and come up with um, a better understanding of anatomy and the whole process, right? Um, it depends on you. If you're if you are an intermediate artist or someone who understands the process and can make characters, I can help you to improve it. That's what I did in the studios. I actually mentor mentored a lot of people in the studio, and that actually helped me to to you know basically improve the work and help them to improve their work. But they know how to model in ZBrush, for example, right? So. Uh, the result depends on how how hard you work. The idea is like to show you the whole process. You can pick up a concept. I show you like well, how many references you need for for a character. Why? I mean, I mean, what concept could be good? The other one could be bad for your portfolio. And then, you know, we can work on some, you know, modeling the body part, or we can use a scan. Maybe I will explain how the scan process is, like how the scans are used for games. Um, marvelous. Uh, maybe like um, like if you don't know Marvelous, I can explain how you can make a pattern in Marvelous and then use it as a base to sculpt in ZBrush. I have my own workflow for Marvelous. I actually never saw anyone using that kind of workflow, so I can give that away, basically. Uh, so the end result really depends on you. It depends on how um, like dedicated you are as an artist. If you're dedicated, then you can push it to, to finish the character. Yeah, so. of course, but I mean, like, um, um, yeah, I like to work with some expectations, you know, just, just a scenario which you would also um, see in, in the studio, basically. So Yeah, that's the thing, like, like that's, the, that's right. the idea, to help you to get to that level, right? But there's a lot of yeah. factors to that. Like if you're just starting and you, you, you don't know anything about the studio work and you've never made a character, it's going to take time. Like I cannot teach you in, in right. two months That's to make a good time. character. But if you know how to make a character, then you go a long way. I can help you improve your mistakes. I can tell you where you need to focus more, where your mistakes are, what the studios are expecting from you, you know, based on, based on your work, basically. Mm -hmm. and, um, and push it from there, basically. All right. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, great, great. So right what now... What would you say is um, your favorite part in the process? My favorite my part? Yeah. It's a sculpting. Sculpting? And yeah. desi designing, actually. If I design something, that's my favorite part. It's more challenging, but uh, anatomy and designing. I don't like... like what I'm doing now is actually a chore. Anyone can make this. You know, there's no point for me to spend time and, and work on this. But I'm just doing it now just to show how, uh, you know, I can do. Right these days, I'm more like into like designing anatomy, uh, like characters with a good anatomy or creatures with humanoid anatomy. You know, 
or you know like the, the the demon that i'm making right that's that's why i like that because um it's fun um like this demon that i'm working on now and, and actually the storytelling part of the process is also good like i feel like there should be a storytelling telling on every art you make because as, essentially art is about saying a story without a story art is nothing if you cannot um deliver a message then you haven't done anything to be honest with you does it make sense yeah perfect yeah so, philosophical yeah it's very philosophical actually you will be surprised i mean that's why i don't like to work on games that don't have any meaning they just like shoot kill whatever <laughs> nothing happens <laughs> the story doesn't have anything in it it's just like whatever is there you know just a question are like you hand uh, uh, retopologize everything or like uh, like in big studios you have your uh, uh, they have uh, like uh, their own sort of retopoli retopologizer softwares like uh, they make no, no the, all the softwares are uh, the standard softwares in the industry studios don't have any softwares for themselves they have only p tools that they develop for rigging for lighting engines you know no one actually makes a tool to retop i haven't seen anywhere actually i don't know maybe some studios do it but i haven't seen it and I think it's not necessary because, I mean, if I have, if I'm a studio owner, I wouldn't even spend time or energy on something like that. I mean, there's like so many different tools that you can use out there to retopologize and do everything you want, right? I made a mistake here. Does it make sense? Yeah. All right, good. Uh, sometimes ZBrush is acting up. So I'm just trying we to... Have a, we have a few questions in the chat. Do you want to go through them? Yeah, for sure. Which one? Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> this, this software is strange. Like, it's hard to scroll all the way down. Wow, there's a lot of questions. Is there a way to copy them all and then... Read them in a text file. Let me see if I can copy everything. Hold on a second. Might be able to drag it into another screen. Uh, is it possible? It doesn't let me. Yeah, this chat is a strange. You can actually pull uh, below the send button. Like between the white and the gray zone, you can pull the chat window larger. It doesn't let me for some reason. That's why I'm confused. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's just, which is strange. Oh, I got it a bit larger, finally. But oh, it's, it's, oh, okay. All right. So hold on a second. Let me read. Would you recommend to work on your own design of uh, your, your character for your portfolio or to use someone? I mean, if you ask me, I will say you should start learning how to design characters, but to learn the por uh, por basically the process, it's always easier to get a concept so you don't have to think about concept and just uh, focus on uh, crafting something, like creating something without, without worrying about concept. So both are good. Um, one of them is only helping you to copy something and helps you to get better at, at doing this stuff and learn the technical side. Concept design is actually a different topic. It's, it's actually helping you to visualize this stuff, to be more creative. So, which is, I think creativity is more important. What is your preferred software to bake normals? I actually use Substance Painter. I'm actually going to do a tutorial about that on my YouTube channel. Uh, maybe tomorrow I will record it and post it. Uh, maybe next week I will post it or maybe this week. So that is something that um, I have my own, like I have a um, way of like, what, what do you call it? Like I, I bake everything in painter. Like if, if this character is like this whole character, for example, mm, I make all the Loris. Uh, I actually made the Loris pieces for this guy, except his belt. I need to just do that. I didn't end the ropes as well, but it's okay. Um, so um, I would actually export the Loris of this at the same time I bake everything all together. Uh, it's a it's a very easy process. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do a video about that and post it on my YouTube to answer your question. A lot of people are actually asking me about that, and I never had. I know people are using Marmoset Toolbag to bake, 
but um, I actually never had anyone asking me, can you bake in Marmoset because it looks better or in the engine or whatever. At the end of the day, what, what, I mean, if I can finish the job with Substance Painter, then I will just paint it, I mean, bake it in Substance Painter. How do you design things and try things and see if it works? I, uh, that's a very good question. So for this guy, um, I actually didn't try it things to see if it works or not. Let me show you. For this guy, I started, as you saw, like I started with, with this, right? I wanted to make a demon. I just wanted to make the face first. So I made a quick concept. This took me like a couple of hours to, to do everything. This is nothing, actually. It's, it's just crap at this point. I was just trying to make something, to design something, to visualize what my, my idea, right? Uh, and then after that, um, I push it further. I try to sculpt, then look at some references, maybe some you know similar ideas on Google I search, and maybe some reference uh, images from nature. Like for this guy, I actually came up with... Um, hold on a second. Someone is calling. I need to cancel this. Sorry, guys. Hold on a second. Oh, it's Mark. Hold on a second, guys. Uh, Mark. Yo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you here. Yeah, I, I don't know what the hell's going on. Try checking. Um, do a quick sound check. Uh, can you hear me? My sound, or you don't? Not in GoToMeeting. I hear you. Yeah. You oh, audio. it shows my sound there. Is it? Are you seeing green? Um. Uh. Um, guys, technical. What? That's weird. I didn't change anything. So I guess it's uh. I actually had internet issues. Maybe it's that. That might be it. Uh, but it's okay. I'm recording everything, so they will see it. Like I can give you my video as well. Because I'm recording on another video. Okay. Yeah, let, let me see. If, um, all right. So, do you see the? Um... All right. That was a technical issue, guys. All right, sorry about that, guys. That's fine. But it's good that I have everything recorded. So, um, for this guy, as as I mentioned, these are all like I picked references from nature, right? I mean, I think nature is the best uh, place to come up with ideas. Um, that's what I would prefer. Um, I mean, other concept artists' work is, is also good, but I like to go with simpler stuff, but more meaningful. Um, you know, if, if I, I bet if someone else did it, they would put a lot of armor pieces and things like that on top of him. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not into that anymore. Like, even, even I'm making this, this character, this demon, I, I want to make him naked. He, he's not going to have any armor on him. That's it. And I'm, I'm going to put a piece of environment because I want to print him. Um, you know, I, I'm going to add more details. Maybe I will make his muscles bigger, add some more tension into his muscles. After I finish the cuff, um, then I can uh, basically change the hand positions. I'll put a chain on him, you know, maybe chain it to a wall or something as if like his, there's tension is pulling the chain. One of the chains is broken, something like that. So, yeah. I mean, I think simple ideas, but meaningful ideas are better than complex models, just models, you know. Cup looks like an Apple watch. Yes, yes, perfect. That's a great example. <laughs> it's practical, right? I mean, you don't need anything crazy. It's just the simplest screen. That's why Apple, like, is the most, uh, um, what do you call it, like, most valuable company in the world because they understand design. And, you know, there's, like, many people actually like to do a lot of details, like 200 pieces of armors and things like that. And if you make a game or film, you would not see that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not against it, but, I'm, I mean, I don't think it's, it's a good way of doing things. Like, even Michelange was um, into simple forms and really nice shapes, right? So, um, you probably get a shadow between the body part, no? I'm not sure what that means. When you are doing multiple texture sets on a single object, do you have any tips on blending the sets together? For example, you have a texture for the hand, head, and a texture for the body. Do you do you have problems making it blend? I mean, when you work in a studio, you will get a scan usually. These days, they give they will give you a scan. 
But if I texture this guy, I, I would actually take paint a base texture in ZBrush, like polypaint. And then maybe I will use it for the very base of it. Maybe I will use a scan texture. Maybe I'll just, I mean, that's actually one of the things I wanted to show you guys. Like um, looking at the scans is actually important. This is from 1024. Look at this scan. You can see a lot of anatomy shapes that you cannot see on any, any other reference. This is the best reference to improve your anatomy, to under, understanding of your anatomy. Where is the, um, you know, terse major muscle? Where is the rhomboid muscle? What happens to the trapezius, the flow of the trapezius, like three different sections? You know, deltoids, um, you can see it like the lateral head of uh, tricep, you know, the long head of the tricep, you can see the medial head. These are the things that, um, I mean, if you look at references, you may not see it. So a scan is great. The other thing about a scan is um, like, for example, I mean, for example, if you work in a studio, they may actually show you another scan from 1024. This is something that people do, don't usually talk about, but when you work in your studios, as if when you're not making demons or you know creatures and things like that, if it's a human character, you you will usually have a scan to work with. So even if you're a best sculptor, head sculptor, or best texture face texture artist, you may not do everything from scratch. So let me open a model to show you what I mean. Is everything helpful, John? I don't know. Like I'm trying to share yeah, as much information as possible is. in a short time. <laughs> I think it's helpful. Yeah, because I mean, I could sculpt something, but sculpting something necessarily, like there's tons of sculpting tutorial and I already have like a bunch of them on my YouTube channel. I will do more. So um, you can get those things actually, uh, like baking tutorial, I'm going to bake something and put it on YouTube or you know, those things you can actually have access to it, but some of the informations people may not understand um, how to have access to them. So this is a scan from 1024. They cleaned it up. They did a good job, like a great job. Uh, do you know uh, 1024, John? James Bosby. 1024? Yeah, James Bosby, these guys. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're doing a great job on the scanning, and I think if people can buy some of these scans, it's very good for anatomy studying. It's better than even classes sometimes, you know, if you have a good understand, like basic understanding of anatomy and then you just analyze the model, just get, get the scan and look for landmarks on the, on the face, like uh, compare it to, the, to a skull, like real a skull. Um, I would actually recommend everyone to have a real skull. I actually ordered one from Amazon, like a co duplicate copy version of a real skull because the face is pretty cool. So going back to the lowest, like this could be the lowest topology for the game. This is like, let's say the game topology. I could grab this. I made a Floyd Mayweather. I don't know if you guys saw that. Let me actually load that. I could grab this and then wrap this geometry around my Floyd, Floyd Mayweather for texturing. New project. I called the, the file, I called it Money the Champ because he loves money and he's a champion. <laughs> he's one of my favorite boxers he's very, very good this is a poly paint right now i didn't uh, use any texture on it so far it's just a poly paint and if you look at it it's um it's very flat look at that it's just nothing very simple and it, i didn't do much work on it i just put some colors on it comparing it to this guy see how the texture is really cool right i could grab this uh, i could transfer this high uh, low res with the uv and everything put it on this guy okay instead of this geometry that i have i have a clean one here as well but uh, i could transfer that and then that way i could transfer the uvs i think this one has a uv as well um let's see um, oh, i'm confused is that like um, XYZ texturing? Um, I don't use XYZ texturing, to be honest with you. Not even in game studios they use it, because when you scan, you will have a full texture wrapped around the head, right? XYZ is good, but it's I saw, like, I don't know how that workflow really works when you can, you can wrap the face, but there's nothing on the neck, then you have to grab everything and then go to, like, I don't know, um, Mari, and then, you know, put the textures on it's just like it's a tedious type of work 
but if I if I have this base, if I can transfer this geometry to my my model, right? I already have a good picture base. Then I can what I can do, I can transfer this as a poly paint to this character, to this one. I actually think uh, no, I don't have a texture for this one. So um, I think I don't have a UV as well, but it says that it's UV, morph UV. I hope ZBrush doesn't crash. If it crash, if it crashes, then oh, okay. So you see, I have a UV here. It's a, it's not a good UV. It's just something. It's not good, but this other head I think has a better UV. Let's see. This is the one of their latest. Um, Geometry you see that this is a good UV for a game Because for a game when when they use this it's actually transferring the textures from the scan data to um, To the geometry so there there won't be any stretches on the texture the UV is not like if you paint by hand there might be stretches But it won't have it when you transfer the texture from this scan and then I can use this I can move this like basically transfer this geometry with the Z wrapper or whatever or even by hand Put it on this one and then project the details from that to the other one right this way i can actually use this as a base do, use this texture as a base for my floyd character and then i can paint on top of it or i can do whatever changes i want to do and it's going to look better than this because this is just hand painted the only guy that i know does a really good job on hand painting textures is chris costa uh, he's a master of it so um I don't know if that answered some questions. For multiple textures, when you use UV, um, usually you won't have any issues with the seams, but if there is an issue, you can fix it in Mari. And recently with Substance Painter, they actually added uh, the option to paint between the UVs, between the UDIMs, so you won't have any problem. You can fix the seam without any issues. You can blend it without an issue. Our character art is encouraged to do anything, everything in ZBrush or switching from Maya. Uh, if I can afford it, as long as. Uh, just keep this in mind, guys. It doesn't matter what you do. It's just about they give you a concept. You need to finish it. Whatever you do in the in between, that's your job. Like even your lead. Like when I was lead, I didn't even tell my team what software to use. I just told them, hey, this is the concept. Do it. Someone used ZBrush. Someone is sculpted in. Actually, everyone used ZBrush, but like someone can sculpt in. I don't know. 3D code, who cares? It doesn't matter. And then, um, yeah, I mean, whatever is easier for you to use. And usually when you work in a studio, you can request to have access to different softwares. They will provide it. Um, so that's not a problem. I don't know about the technical artists from Ghost. I mean, tech, tech artists, I'm, I'm still friend with them, but I mean, I guess. That's something you guys need to ask John and Ryan to do it. You, you see that question, John? Which one? Someone says, could we get a technical artist for Ghost? Uh, From Ghost of Tsushima? Yeah, they want, they want technical <laughs> artists to talk about it. <laughs> I'll see what we can do. Yeah, that, that's like, I can connect you to people, give you some information, but I don't know if they will. Uh, let me see if there's any other answer. I think he skipped over it. I was here, I was focused on trying. I'm not sure what that's the part. Can someone fill me in if I didn't answer the question? Which question was it? I guess someone had a question I didn't answer. What is the current polygon optimal poly count of a hero asset character for a game mesh? And when working as character artist, do you have to make all the LODs for them? Uh, if a studio spends money making LODs, they will never finish a triple A game. So, or they'll have to spend a lot of money. LODs has to be more automated. LODs are a technical thing at this point because making characters are really hard. It's not, it's not easy anymore. So it takes time to make LODs and they usually automate it. So don't worry about LOD. But you need to understand how LODs are made. But I never made LODs. I can tell you that, never. Because um, it it's not necessary. 
uh, game in, they, they come up with different ways. Simply Gun can make LODs and they connect it. They code, add tools and code stuff. And it's it's made after the fact, like when you ship the character. So what is the current up to mobile? The poly count depends on the project. Um, how big is the project? How many polygons are loaded into the memory at the same time? There's a lot of factors. So how much budget is there for the characters, um, like memory wise, uh, poly count wise? and you know things like that so some games can be like 400,000 200,000 300,000 polygons for a hero and 120,000 for um an enemy character some games are less um and i think with the, if with ps4 power you can do it then ps5 should not be a problem to um basically manage poly count easily to be honest with you ps5 is like eight times more powerful or something like that from what i heard they may also develop an auto rigger for the entire project so uh, rigging. Um, yeah, some games they actually make a rigging. So actually, I'm not gonna say which project because I don't know uh, what I can do, but what, what I can say. But on one of the projects, I was actually the, the character team was actually um, we had a tool that we just pressed a button, like a couple of buttons, and the character was getting rigged, and then we could pl put it in the game and play it. The rig was ready, and then the rigging team later actually cleaned up the skinning. Actually, you know, one of the characters I wanted to see it better, I cleaned up the skinning myself and I played with it in the game. So, I mean, that happens as well. Should character artists be scared of pro photogrammetry or taking over? That will never happen. Obviously, just another tool. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I think photogrammetry is going to create more jobs rather than destroying your jobs. So, um, characters are becoming hard to make. It's not an easy thing to make a character. A character. It's becoming longer and longer. In the past, like Loris was taking like a week to make. Now it's like some character, some Loris characters make like takes like I don't know five weeks, seven weeks to make them. Just the Loris. So I don't think photogrammetry is going to create an issue. Uh, is it possible if you could show us some character rigging if you're aware of it? Well, I, I'm not the rigger, so I don't know about that. Would you suggest that having the type of? Uh, no, I actually don't have any art or university degree. It doesn't matter degrees uh, i actually have my opinion about degree i don't like schools like basically when you go to universities to get a degree that's to me just i don't know i wouldn't pay for that i never did i learned everything myself it's hard well i had to but degree has nothing to do with your skill set and your job to be honest uh, it's only about like how good you are as a as a as a as a creative person see positions for senior or lead character artists but rarely for less experience now actually there's always like positions for mid-level senior uh, junior artist usually studios have a couple of senior artists and then like a couple of mid-level and a couple of junior artists they have a good mix of it you know so it's you can i mean it's everywhere um i mean you know, actually, what's interesting, I never worked as a junior or a mid-level in a studio because uh, I was a senior artist and then I worked as a freelancer because I did so many projects as a freelance freelancer. My first job in, in the studio, game studio, I was a senior artist. And then I was a senior at Ubisoft, senior at the Sledgehammer, and then lead at Soccer Punch. And now I'm working from home. I'm not going to say where or with who. That's a secret. But I don't work in a studio right now. I work from home. How many character artists did you supervise on the game? Uh, that's a good question. Six in the studio and about, um, like depends. One studio it was like six in the studio and 20 outsource people, just individual characters. And then uh, I was training and teaching them and everything. And then at some point, um, outsource artist or manager was uh, basically managing those people but i had to do a lot of meetings for 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 a long time to help them to learn the process and teach them like uh, at some point i was actually teaching a marvelous designer sculpting anatomy or proportions things like that so biggest challenge you encountered in, on a project is bad management the project is never a challenge because you will find a solution but you can never find a solution to make people act the way they should act in a professional environment. How many character artists did you supervise? I answered that. And how closely would uh, will this process be? 
what was the inter um there was a question about the process so the course that i want to do is basically starting from scratch hires lores um marvelous designer um how to import your marvelous designer into zbrush how to sculpt the folds um everything basically and then substance painter what we use um you know to texture a character and substance painter how to texture it in substance painter um usually the engine part and presentation is something that actually depends on the studio and these days with marmors a tool like you can actually present without any problem but it's good to have some knowledge about um unreal engine there's a lot of tutorials that you can use from like to basically learn how to use unreal engine like there's like tons of tutorials even vertex has do you guys have like uh, any courses for for unreal engine john you're not there i don't hear you yeah. can you hear me now i uh, guess yes i'm saying you guys have courses for unreal engine right yes we do okay so that's what i'm saying like i mean because every studio is different uh, when you get into a studio the engine they use is even if it's Unreal, it's actually customized. It's different. It's not just the exact Unreal engine. The base is the same, but there's like the shaders. They actually write it. They change it. They do things on it. Um, like um, I mean, I use for example every studio. I use a different engine. Uh, I use their own engine, for example. I'm not gonna again name a studios because I don't want to cause any legal issues. But different studios have different engines, and usually when you move, you have to start everything from scratch the base is the same this uh, um, like pbr workflow is the same the the whole understanding of the ga game engine game engine is the same uh but the, um, the buttons change obviously the names of the things in the engine change changes so i mean even if you learn unreal engine when you get in get a job you will have to actually learn their engine you just need to have a good understanding of the the uh, i mean basically game engine you know so for me at this point, if I move to a, uh, like work with another studio, I don't care what engine they use because I'm used to like using five different engines. Nothing happens if I learn to use another one. So the workflow is the same. Um, at which part of the process do you actually come in as a character artist? Do you go, do you go concept art? As a character artist, you don't, define the concept you need to be a i mean like for example mike nash was working on um horizon zero down right he was the designer concept designer for the creatures so he made the he made the highest models for those robotic creatures and then someone else basically finalized the lowers and you know texturing and things like that but his responsibility was uh to concept it to lead the concept team of the you know, but, but the way he concepts, there's like two ways of concepting. One is like he do it in Photoshop, kit bashing like photos together and come up with a concept. The other way is to um, do it in ZBrush, just like how I started doing this, the, the robot that I started working on. So that's another way. Um, so yeah, I mean, as a, as a character artist, you will have to basically focus more on the quality of the characters. Concept art is someone else's job, unless if you want to be a concept artist. But I actually say that you need to know how to concept because sometimes concept artists, they don't know um, how things are going to look like in the engine. And as a character artist, because the name is there, right? Artist, you need to be creative. If you see some issues, you need to be able to give them some hand and tell them, hey, this is not going to work because of this. And then I think if you change this piece like this, then it's going to work in the engine or in the game or when they rig it, you know? Like, for example, like, uh, basically, if simulating cloth is a big problem in games, right? Uh, it's, not, it's not an easy thing. The, the technology is getting better and better, like, fast, but it's not 100% there yet. So if you are uh, basically making cloth and it doesn't work, you need to have um, some plan or some idea about how to make the cloth to basically make it work with the with the workflow of the game so you can help give some help to the concept designer to make the character look good you know uh from your first time opening zbrush to your first position how long did it take you to get your first job as a character artist um 
Uh, first time I opened ZBrush, I actually don't remember. This is like from 2004. This is a long time ago. But I mean, maybe I can share some of the old stuff that I made. I actually have a video. Let me say that. Is it okay if I share that, John? I have a video about my progress as an artist, and it's like I'm showing my old works, and then uh, is is it a YouTube link? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. It's basically explaining some of the things that um, I had to go through to to become a character artist. But you know, actually, for some reason, from the beginning, um, the first character I made in ZBrush, actually, I showed it to one of my concept artist friends, and he was like, "You have an eye for characters," and I think because when I was a kid. I was drawing a lot. Like that was my passion. I was drawing or making stuff with mud or, you know, grabbing some dirt and sculpting stuff, you know, when I was a kid. So, um, let me actually share this link here. You guys can check this out because I share some of my old works. If you guys want to laugh, I can show you more old work. Let me actually see if I can find something. Is that okay, Mark? Yeah, John? Yeah, of course. Go for it. If I can find it. I have some really, really old stuff. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at this. If it opens. <laughs> I think if it opens. It's... Come on. It's crashing now. Uh-oh. Don't crash, please. All right, crash. <laughs> but it's not opening. Look at this. This is like, I don't know, from how long ago. <laughs> that looks like Link. <laughs> yeah, that's Link. Um, I was trying to make it for a print. So <laughs> this is a long time ago. Or look at this. Um, this is, I don't know, I think this was 2005, I guess. I think I made it in Modbox. Wow. Thanks, man. That, look, that looks like the guy from uh, 24, that yeah, TV yes. show. Yes. <laughs> 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 but look at these, man. These were my drawings, actually, when I was drawing, like, long time ago, 2003 or something like that. And I painted this in Photoshop. This is, like, drawing from 2002, three. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is earlier. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. I keep these because it just reminds me how, far, how long it took me to come this far, you know? <laughs> this... <laughs> Oh my goodness, I don't know. This is 2006, wow. Like I was better at drawing by hand, you know, that's weird. Like in Photoshop, it was just crap. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. <laughs> it's incredible, the journey, huh? <laughs> yeah, man, look at this. <laughs> it's actually, it takes, you see, I was better with draw, drawing by hand, you know, when I was copying something like an image or something. Um, actually, it takes 10 years of hard work to, like I was trying, from the beginning I was trying to design something, 2006, 14 years ago. Uh, I can tell you actually I could be a lot better if I didn't focus on getting jobs. I could be a lot better now. Like I wasted so much time working in the studios, like a small, big, whatever, it doesn't matter. It was good and bad. The good thing is, good thing is like I advanced in my life, I learned a lot of things, I learned communication, you know, working with people, whatever. The bad thing was like I didn't get enough chance to focus more on my own um, passion, which is like designing characters, you know. Uh, but now I can design. It's just like I need to push it to the next level. So, like for example, like this is an old work. If I can show you guys, if it opens up, it's crashing again. Oh my goodness! Why is it so heavy? Like, I have a it... question regarding that, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. So in my current position. I work as a 3D artist. Okay. And obviously what I would really like to do is characters. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm at that point where I could move on to another company and obviously probably ask for more money, maybe a promotion, yeah. get to the senior level. But that's not helping me towards what I want. And obviously at this current moment, I wouldn't consider myself like great at characters. So probably similar to myself like a junior. Yeah, me too. I'm not going to consider you... myself great, to be honest with you. <laughs> For real. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm so shit at everything. <laughs> um, would you like drop yourself down? Like say you want to stop being a 3D artist, start working on props and environments and 
hardly ever working characters. Just to go into a position where it's a lower tier, but yes. you're working on characters. I would. But I wouldn't you work would? cheap for anyone. Um, because position is doesn't mean anything. I was lead, I was senior, I was um, a junior artist when I started, right? As long as you learn something and you can um, change your future, it doesn't matter what you do. Whatever you do, it should your goal should be that, to actually make a better future for yourself. So position is only temporary. It's just an illusion. What is position? Mm -hmm. It's just a name. They, they actually give you a position to give you a tier for your salary, for how much you get paid, right? Yeah. So look at this. We talked about Garb. You know him, right? Or Idon Grazio. I'll give you an example. I interviewed this guy. I'm going to publish it soon this week. I mean, this guy, right? He doesn't have a position. He's just a concept artist. But you know how much he charges per hour, per, per day? How much? That. <laughs> 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 I've been doing this all wrong, man. <laughs> all of us did did it wrong, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. This is something that I'm trying to bring awareness to people. If you're a good artist, if you don't focus on the studios, it's good to work for the studios. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong, okay? You get a lot of experience. You get to meet so many good people, so many good artists. Actually, every studio I left, uh, I actually miss the people that I work with. But... Mm -hmm. My journey as a person is more important than my emotions with other people, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, my journey is more important than what title I have. Do you get what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, if, if Jeff Bezos wanted to work as a stock market person, I think he was working in a financial firm or something. He would have the senior position of whatever or lead or manager of whatever, like uh, Wall Street, right? He wouldn't even be close, anything close to what he, he is now, right? Now he's like $180 billion rich, right? $180 billion. And he's adding to his wealth. The same thing goes with Elon Musk, right? He's a CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, but his focus is not on his position. position. His focus is on uh, what kind of value he can bring in, what he can change, um, I mean, in human lives, the way, I mean, how, how he can change human lives. Uh, and basically... That's how he's making more money and he's doing what he wants to do, if that makes sense. So yeah. if you're a senior 3D artist, it doesn't mean anything. You're an artist. That's what I, sh what I say you should consider yourself. When someone asks, asks me, what do you do? I'm like, I'm an artist, right? I was lead at Sucker Punch. I'm not lead anymore. That was, that's by choice, right? Because I realized that I'm doing something wrong. I need to change my way. I need to change the way I, I think. I need to change, change the way I work. I need to change my focus. Um... And I realized like being a lead is not necessarily um, in line with my future, my future mm -hmm. plan, my future goal. And uh, I think you will be successful as an artist once you actually understand that studios and positions is just an experience and something that you can learn from, but it shouldn't be your goal. I always tell this to people, Stu working in a studio should not be your goal. You, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, you yeah. guys know... Um, Richard McDonald. Why is he asking for his network? I think everything is about money, man. Let's make more money. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I know it. I need that Tesla. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if I love Tesla. <laughs> so, look at this. I mean, this guy is amazing. He's an artist. And he makes tons of money. One of his... Is, look at that. That's beautiful. Look at the forms. Like, with, with the first glimpse, you just love it. Right? I yeah. went to his um, gallery in, uh, I think, Long Beach. I forgot the name. In California, in LA. Um, so, his pieces are, like, going for sale for $50,000, $120,000. That expensive, Right? And look, I mean, you can see in his face. Do you see, guys, I mean, how passionate he is? Do you see it, John? Like, when he works, he's, like, full of passion, man. Look at that. He's actually diving into the work that he's doing. Do you guys see that? 
I guess no one it's is so answering. Good. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's mesmerizing. <laughs> yeah, it is. But imagine if this guy was caught in like, how, what is my position, right? Where should I work? Which studio would hire me? All of that. It's good to get hired, but that should not be a goal. That should, should not be the final goal. It should be just an experience on your way. So you it's can a express, milestone. It's a milestone, exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's a small goal, you know? And you know, I actually don't like it when you show your resume to a studio, they ask you, why did you work here for two years? My answer is because, you know, why, why I should work for more or less. If it's not in line with my experience after two years, if I feel like I'm not adding any value, if I feel like I'm, not, I'm losing my life for, for my future, then I should change, right? And every time I changed, I was happier. I can tell you that because I, I, I actually, the more you go forward, the more re you realize what you exactly want to do. You experience, you will be like, okay, this is not for me. No, this is not for me. This is not for me. Then you finally land what you want to do, if you know what I mean. But I think for every artist, eventually your goal should be to express yourself through art and do something for the public, change something for humanity. You know, maybe a piece of artwork can, can bring peace instead of war or something, you know, or maybe you can sell a piece of a sculpture like this and then someone else has learned from you uh, makes a better anatomy work and get a job and becomes a better sculptor or you know it's just like about how you add value to life right i mean tesla yeah. adds value to life elon musk is doing that jeff bezos is doing that bill gates is doing that they are super rich because they're adding more value than anyone else if you know what i mean so yeah. or warren buffett he's like he's super rich but the things the values that he adds but i mean he always gives to charities he helps a lot of different organizations you know he's rich yeah but but he, he lives like a poor man, but he has, he's actually changing many lives. So, and he's, he's, he doesn't like Elon Musk and Elon Musk doesn't like him as well. So, <laughs> 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 so that's the thing. I mean, it depends on, um, I think that's, that's, it's very philosophical, but don't get caught with like, what is my position? You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can't be a no one artist, but make $200,000 uh, a year or three hundred thousand dollar a year if you're doing a good job yeah right i mean um look at uh, mike nash he's he worked on he designed all the robots for horizon zero now right you guys know mike nash do you know him john i do uh patreon i want to open his portfolio let me actually look at so what is his position uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but <laughs> he does this. You know? <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. This is amazing. I love this piece. Yeah. Such a good one. Like the proportions, the shapes. I told him, he's going to teach me. I'm going to learn from him how to do like this kind of design. This is what I want to do. so much personality in it as yeah. well. Yeah. Because so he's an sassy. artist. Yes. <laughs> because... <laughs> Because he's an artist, man. He, he knows what, what he's doing. He, he mixes a lot of like um, organic um, shapes with uh, robotic shapes. I mean, look at Vitaly Bulgaro. That's the god of designing. He's such a nice person. Dude, this guy is... By the way, guys, don't escape books. Like, if you want to get better in life, read as much as you can. I'm telling you. Like, reading about different subjects, about life, about business, about entrepreneurship, about art, about history... When you design a character, it's important to understand the history of the character. Like if you want to design something, if you don't know what you're doing, you will not be able to design a character, right? If you want to make an armor, you need to understand why, like, let's say, let me see if the, he has something here, like, um, he had something here. I mean, let's say this piece, right? This is one of my favorites. He made it a long time ago. I mean, you need to understand why this, this piece is here. If you ask him, he will tell you exactly what, what these are. He doesn't just put random shapes here and, you know, okay, I, I designed a character. It's not like that. It's practical, right? It serves a purpose. Yeah, there's a purpose, exactly. Um, like, why this is like this, you know? There's a purpose for this. Like, he can tell you that this could be a, I don't know, he, like a gene booster or something. There is there is a reason. It's not just, okay, let me add a detail here. He, he actually... Um, um, adds some description and a story or something like look at this see he named all the, all the pipes <laughs> you see what i mean boy loves his detail yeah 
and the details yeah. are amazing. There's like a there's an explanation what this is, right? And and by the way, he understands human anatomy better than me. So think about that. It's important. Like I get a lot of students tell me, hey, I don't want to learn anatomy. I think this is too basic. After 15 years, I'm still having problem with anatomy. If you ask Ryan, he'll tell you the same. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy, man. There's like infinite shapes that you can like pose infinite different way of posing a character, right? So yeah. if you rotate this I'm arm still a little bit, the armpit. what's that? I'm still struggling the armpits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not easy. Like if you move the arm forward, the shape of the muscles here, all, they all change. Like all of this will change. The, I mean, the yeah. scapula moves forward. The serratus muscle is, could be more under ter tension because this is the muscle that pulls the scapula forward. The rhomboid muscle changes and pushes the trapezius. You know, the tres minor, actually, a lot of people don't pay attention to this. Um, sorry, um, not tres minor. What am I talking about? <laughs> My brain is like melting down. Um, um, too much Elon Musk. Yeah, too much Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> let me, hold on a second. Let me check it. Pectoralis. Pectoralis major and pectoralis minor, right? A lot of people don't know that pectoralis minor is actually pushing the pectoralis major muscle pushing it up, right? So uh, if I show you an example, I actually have this bodybuilder again open. I should open these to show you guys. Do you see that there's a bulge here, like like that being, right? The pectoral mm -hmm. alice minor is actually going through there. Do you see that bump? Mm -hmm. Let me actually show you an example. Um, this is the pectoralis major, right? And then look at that, this one, pectoralis minor. It's under it. And it pushes, makes this kind of bulky in this section. So you, if you understand these things, it's, it's actually becomes easier to design a character, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, it's super important. Like people ignore anatomy and they struggle for years and then they realize, okay, I need to go back and study anatomy again. So... That's um, that is something that you guys need to keep in mind. Uh, what else? I don't know. Uh, almost finished. This. Would you consider like that part, like the pectoralis minor, and um, to be unnecessary when it comes to developing straightforward a pose characters, um, and that only comes into like making concept designs and sketches? No, it's not unnecessary. If you understand anatomy, your work becomes better automatically right 100 percent. Right. there's no doubt like look at the history the best is character designers best character artists best sculptors they know anatomy mm -hmm. so there is a reason for that you know what i mean i mean um i know a lot of good character artists that they sculpt with a picture you give them a picture of like i don't know like um let me see i mean uh, wwe uh Like WWE wrestlers, right? You can give him this picture, like maybe Rock or Dwayne Johnson or some of these guys, right? Uh, you give them a picture and they will sculpt it like really well, or I don't know, like an actor, whatever. But if if they don't understand anatomy, um, um, basically, uh, they they wouldn't be able to understand what they're doing. They're just copying his stuff. You know what I mean? But when I see this guy, when I look at John Cena, I see it. What did they alter this image? His arm is huge. <laughs> so huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes. That's wrong. <laughs> this guy's a monster. He's huge himself. Like he's big. Uh, but you know, like if you understand anatomy, then you know this is the straightest muscle, then you know there's rib cage here. Then you understand why this shape is like that. What is this, right? This is the medial um, head of like tri triceps. Then you have biceps, right? Um, so it's, it becomes easier for you to read references. If you don't know it, it's just a bunch of shape and you don't know what you're looking at. Like especially the forearm. Let me show you the forearm. Forearm muscles. Uh, forearm, actually, uh, athletic forearm. What the hell? Who cares about the sleeve? Come on. 
if you don't know what's going on here, if you don't understand the, um, all the extensor and flexor muscles, then this becomes confusing, right? So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, like, if you don't know that this is brachioradialis, it, it becomes confusing. So I still struggle with the names. Sometimes I have to look at it again and remember the names. Uh, I remember one of them is called DGT minimi. It's a small muscle. It's actually connected uh, somewhere here. Somewhat. Sometimes you see it. Uh, it's a very cool muscle, actually. Let me find it. But it's confusing if you don't know what what what. This is the DGT minimi. This is what controls uh, pinky finger. Um, if you don't understand this muscle, then you will see a bunch of shape and you don't know what's going on. You get you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, the name of the muscles, Maria is asking if it's important. I'm actually trying to remember all the names and everything and all the bone names, but I'm not pushing myself to remember. I'm not sitting there and reading it every time to, to re memorize it, right? What I do is like when I sculpt um, a new arm, like when I was sculpting this guy, uh, I actually try to remind myself of some of the names, right? Uh, I think it's important to know the names because you will know what's missing, what doesn't, what, what is not missing, you know? So names could help actually to memorize things better. Name, to have a name and also the, the image of something makes it easier for you to memorize the stuff. So, but I wouldn't like say, um, you have to put yourself under stress to, to learn it. It's just go slowly with the flow and, and learn it, learn as much as you can. One of the things you can do actually, Mariano Steiner, I don't, I, you guys know him, right, uh, John? I had a podcast episode with him recorded with him on my YouTube channel. He actually um, showed me like in the past when he was studying anatomy, he was actually writing the names, like um, sculpting and then writing the names of, uh, of the muscles on top of them so he can remember it later. Actually, one of the things I'm doing now, I'm trying to make a, make an ecorche. Let me show you guys. It's not done yet. Oh, yeah? It's just, yeah, it's just a basic, like I just started. I just spent like a day and a half or less. Come on, this is it. <laughs> so uh, I started making this. Um, it's not done. It's nothing. Nothing finished yet. But um, oh, this these are merged. Uh, this shouldn't be merged. But I named the muscles, like you can see. Um, some of them I named it, I guess, uh, like this, for example. Uh, posterior thigh group. Uh, no, no, that wasn't this one. Vastus radialis, this one, right? I just gave it the name. I put the name here. Uh, Vastus medialis. Um, and then uh, femoris, rectus femoris. Uh, sartorius muscle, this long muscle. So when I write the name, it's actually helping me to remember the name. So that's how I remember it. I'm I'm usually good at learning anatomy and learning it, uh, learning the name by doing it. <sighs> yes, that's uh, Ryan did a female version as well. I don't know uh, where can I find that one. If you guys know, I can open it. Uh, Thank you for your um, tools. Might be. Oh, this one. There you go. Oh, okay, it's a ZTL. I thought this is a Z project. Yeah, Ryan has a. Yeah, I mean, if you ask him, I think he will tell you the same about the anatomy. If it wasn't, what? Okay. If it wasn't important, he wouldn't sit there and do all of this. So he made everything, right? I mean, so making anatomy is actually good because some people don't even pay attention to this muscle, this one in the chest. I don't know the name on that, but this is a very good anatomy actually for female it's a very good one to study female anatomy and yet people don't pay attention to it they just want to make monsters and you know get into a studio <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> free resource from the master himself and no one cares <laughs> <laughs> make cute girls and big monsters <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, guys, use these. That's free. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. I have a question about sure. like um, the characters' muscle groups, and a lot of that there. Um, some of that isn't really shown. 
and hidden by skin and um, surface detail. Is there a point where like it's best to learn just the surface volumes? I mean, and what here's muscle the thing. mass actually. Here's the thing: Do you enjoy knowing what you're doing, or do you enjoy just making something to add details? What do you want to do, right? I mean, if you're, for me, I'm a curious person, right? I enjoy like understanding why this muscle is there. Why is it? Why is this happening, right? So because of that curiosity, I'm actually making myself myself to, um, to do all of that work. You know, to to study everything and not just the, the the things that I see on the top. You know what I mean? So that depends on you. I mean, of course, it's not a problem. Like if you just know how to make cloth and armors and and make a lot of work on a lot of games and stuff, right? But I mean, it's a matter of like what you enjoy the most yourself. Because at the end of the day, when you get old, you're not going to think which studio you work for. You will think about what did you finish and what you didn't, and if you're happy with what you accomplished. You know what I mean? Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. No. That's hidden quite close. At to least time. to me, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same for me. Like, I mean, when you when you work on a game, you finish it, you ship. That's it. It's gone. It's history. No one. You don't care about it anymore. I mean, I mean, okay, whatever. Like, you ship a game, right? I mean, for me, it's. I think as a as a human being, I want to answer my questions rather than just um, shipping something. And my que I have, and I have a lot of questions. You know. Um, what happened to my reference? Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Like even when I make this, I'm like, why did they make what? Why did they make this like this? I, I try to ask questions about why is it like this, the shape of it, right? So, the, I think the curiosity is is more important than uh, basically trying to look for what's more useful, what what is yet less useful. You get, you get what I'm saying? Obviously, when you work for a company, they they might give you a scan, and you will ne never need a, need anatomy at all. But if you understand it, it's actually easier for you to do the job. I think that's that's actually what I believe. Uh, what else? Any more questions? I guess nothing. Everyone is tired. Should we continue or should we finish it, John? Are you there or you left? No, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should um, finish it if there's no more question. Yeah, we can start wrapping it up. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to finish this piece. I'm going to record the whole thing, um, basically. And then I'll, I'll share it with people to see um, how I would finish a hard surface piece. Um, I'll put the link. Uh, I will put the video in my YouTube. I actually recorded this guy. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I'm actually thinking to put it on Gumbro at some point. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys oh, want to nice. see how I started this, um, there's also um, a video on my YouTube channel. I put some notations on it. Uh, let me show you. The other thing is actually good. Um, I, I interview a lot of good artists. Ryan does the same. I think listening to those helps people to <clears throat> basically um, understand other people's process. So I have this video, this is like a stage before, which is actually, I showed the whole process of making this character so far, you know? And then, you know what's interesting? Let me actually tell you something. Um, for his legs, these legs, actually after I made this, not this one, sorry. After I made this, um, I actually used this one to make the leg for this guy, these legs. So, and then <clears throat> basically I sculpted, um, added the fingers and things like that. So, um, I don't know. Is there any other specific questions that I can answer? If you guys want to see the master in action. Who is the master in action? Am I the master in action? <laughs> <laughs> Is that you posting that, John? Yeah, that's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for saying it, but I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Have the chains 
I mean, I've been around like this one. Yeah, whip around. That's that's one of them is like the. Um, let me see what else I want to. I want to read some questions before I leave. For your own personal projects, do you do any beginning sketches or concept art in two D? No, you can do it in three D. You don't need to do it in two D. <coughs> I mean, there is a there is a relation. Like if I I, I had a podcast with um, uh, Stephen Stahlberg. I don't know if you guys know him. I asked him if it's better to learn 2D. He said that he actually, when he started doing 3D, he learned the stuff in 2D. So it's it goes both ways. But you don't have to really like do it in 2D. It's a good knowledge to have, but you can just sculpt. Uh, I think sculpting is has is actually as hard as um, you know doing 2D. Might be actually even harder in, in some cases. I like more dynamic flows, or even if they are hidden. I guess there's no other questions. Everyone is like, people are just jumping out one by one. I mean, in the same approach goes to learning different values of posing on the body. Yeah, I think you can do that. Like I see like Ryan had some fat on his uh, female anatomy. I think you can do that as well. Um, so you can definitely add some fat so basically, study, right? These are fat, right? Um, this is this is actually I figured out like doing a decorsche like this is the best way to study anatomy. And then on top of it, add add a skin, then you will realize what's going on. I'm actually going to make the full bone for the for this guy. Like I want to start the bones again from scratch, do everything. I didn't. I don't have a bone for this guy. I just made the the, the top surface. Um, but I'm going to do everything eventually, maybe piece by piece. Maybe I'll make a tutorial and set it like that. Make a business for myself. What do you guys think? <laughs> All right. No more questions. Everyone is going to add this to it. Yes. It depends on your personality. I'm pretty glad I'm not working from home to communicate. Uh, yeah, depends on your personality, Martin. Um, I actually have many friends. I'm, I'm very, um, I actually like to socialize with people, but I don't like to talk about things that doesn't matter. Um, I, I feel like not to, not to being egoistic. It's not that, but I feel like time is too precious to waste it on uh, chit chat. You know, it depends. Sometimes you, you may need chit chat just to relax and relieve your mind or when you hang out with friends, but, um, you know, I, I like to work more than anything else, to be honest with you. Like, I don't have weekends. I don't do anything. I just sit here and work. What else? Um, where do you find references for the pose? Google. So if I go to Google or um, let's say Pinterest, you're welcome. Gilles, if I say your name correct, Gilles, 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 I don't know. You are very welcome. Uh, like what kind of reference? Let's say bodybuilding pose. You just search something and then you want to make this pose. You can just search on Pinterest or search on Google, you know? Um, look at that. Like you want to make this pose. There's like tons of different references for this. Uh, for this guy, actually. I posed in front of the mirror myself and I tried to make a pose myself. So you can be the best reference, actually. You can be a reference yourself and test the pose on yourself, take some photos and um, put it together and look at it in your computer and use it as a reference. And then you can even push it further to make it more extreme because I feel like extreme poses are really cool. That's why comics are looking awesome. Uh, do you know when to when use... Uh, well, I mean, that comes with your practice. Like I use symmetry and then symmetry doesn't matter. Like at some point I just stop sim doing symmetry. It depends. Like if I want to, like, for example, like if I want to add the, to the volume of this section and if I want to add same volume here, I'll just do it together. Right. But if I want to make this part like different, then I just sculpt this part. But you need to keep in mind, ZBrush is making your job easier because you have the option to 
to first change your pose multiple times and also like a sculpt uh, with symmetry but in reality you don't have that option so sculpting without symmetry is good it's actually very good and i sculpted this guy let me show you i sculpted this guy 80 percent of the time without symmetry i actually sculpted left hand and right hand separately completely separate like this was a piece of nothing i actually had some some muscles but i actually like designed it based on this pose like sculpted based on this pose so yeah i mean you can add symmetry anytime you need to uh do you guys have any advice for focusing on getting up to date with rigging alone uh i think you need to talk to a tech artist for that rigging alone is complicated and i have no clue i used to do rigging 10 15 years ago uh 12 years ago 13 years ago but i didn't continue so all right i guess that's it i don't have anything else to say for now i guess i'm running out of energy um getting like brain fog at this point if i say anything it's it's just nothing basically should we finish it guys you're welcome hi yes hello I, um can i ask a question please yes you can um, of course no problem <laughs> um before you start the character do you pre-plan it how do you decide how to design it do you just figure it out as you go i'm asking because sometimes i want to start something and i oh. look for references but i find myself just lost on the internet with plenty of images okay so uh, let me tell you this um what do you want to make mm, let's say it's a character or um, sci-fi soldier and it's a mixture of organics and hard surface. And then I start looking for the face references, and then I start looking for armor pieces, and I just gather, I think I just Where, get gathered too many references. Yeah. Where is this character Where, coming from? Where does it live? Oh, so focus more on the story of it, on the background, and then just- Well, you need to understand, to right? If this, this character is living on Mars, then he might be actually a taller person. If he's li living on, on on uh, Saturn, then he might be actually a, I don't know, like he might not he might not even have feet. He might be a completely different character, right? So it's important to know where where he lives, what he eats, for example, you know, those kind of things. Because in in nature, um, any 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 animal or humans, um, we actually evolve because nature wants to have a superior type of um, creature, you know, because life itself wants to find ways to become immortal or um, life wants to basically you know um, expand its um, territory with to another planet right so because of that life needs to come up with different ways to grow so if you like look at dinosaurs they were big and huge and they were strong but they were stupid so they got <laughs> extinct right they don't know why they think maybe it's like Astrono uh, so, sorry, um, asteroids destroyed them or maybe there was a disease. There's like different factors for it. Uh, but humans, we are actually able to overcome any type of obstacle, right? Like there are people that li live in Siberia under like minus 60 degrees Celsius. It's like they go out and they, their nose is freezing after like two minutes. And if they don't cover it, they might actually lose their nose. So that kind of um, harsh environment. Or even like in Dubai, for example, it's a hot, hot place, right? I mean, it's not a place for humans to live, but they live there. They made a city there. So that's the difference between, uh, um, how do I say, like, um, we evolve because, um, because we are smarter, right? I mean, we, we can live in harsh conditions because, because we are smarter. But because, I mean, to live in those uh, environments, we need a specific uh, stuff, right? For example, in Dubai, you don't need to... You need you need air conditioning ev everywhere. So if you want to make a suit for a sci-fi character who lives in like Dubai or a hard harsh environment like a hot place, then you need to figure out okay this character can have something specific like just for cooling like for for the suit right to to make him cool. If if this character is living in Siberia, then he needs to have something to keep him warm. You know what I mean? So. Or if the gravity is hard, maybe there is a device on the back of the suit that actually changes the gravity for his, inside the suit so this guy doesn't crush his bones because of the extreme gravity. Uh, so I think storytelling is important. And then you can search for uh, different um, 
different um, parts like let's say you can even look at the cars car mechanical parts right i mean let's actually look at something um i don't know like um uh, let's actually look at vitali's work instead of that vitali because you said uh, sci-fi character right yes um so like this is a good example like he has explanation for for all of these pieces I mean, I think one of the things you can do, you can study the work of these kind of artists to figure out what they do. Um, do have you done any portfolio piece before? Mm, I need to update my portfolio because like can, you've been saying before can, about, do you mind if I you're not going to see much. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to judge. I just want to have an idea because the reason um, I ask is Andrew, maybe you're jumping too far too fast. So, um, my name is Andrea Skubli. Uh, Andrea, like that? Double E, double E. Like that? Yeah. And then? And then S-C-U-B-L-I. That's the one, the smiley oh, face you're one. You're famous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is good. This is very good. Did you make for, oh, you're making hair? Yeah, I'm that currently working on hair, but I, I feel like I need to get oh, back wow. to what I like most. I wish I wish I could do hair like you. This is perfect. Oh, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, maybe you can teach me hair. I'll teach you how to make characters. <laughs> I'm happy with that deal. <laughs> uh, uh, did you have a concept for this? We, if I remember correctly, we had a rough concept. Someone painted over something mm -hmm. else. And then it was just figuring out how to do it. Um. These are pretty good. Like, I mean, I can see like, um, yeah, this is not, yeah, it's, it's good. Um, you just need more pieces. So, um, <laughs> if you want to design something, that's a different question, right? I mean, designing is not something like you can design immediately. I cannot design hard surface. Like this is the best thing I could do the first time. Let me actually show you you saw it already, but just to, um, since we were talking about it, okay. I'm good at designing organic characters. But um, making this was actually, I was actually happy with it overall, but now I'm looking at it, I'm not happy with it anymore. You know? So this mm -hmm. was the first uh, sci-fi character I made. And because I was good with anatomy, I could add a stuff um, like pectoral, pectoral muscles, right? Or um, like something on his back, Tress Major, for example. And I, I'm thinking to add something else here to mix, um, like you said, mix of different characters. But for me, it's like, this is a, this is a character with, subco with consciousness but he's a robot, like as if like there is a real consciousness in, consciousness inside a robot. So he might have parts that are um, that has liquid in them, right? I mean, or some muscles, muscle. I mean, pieces like muscles, something like that. But mm -hmm. yeah. So the way I made this, I actually looked at a lot of uh, references online. Um, let me see actually if I have any references for this guy. Let me see if I can find the reference folder. But I think depending on what you want to do, um, it's a hard question to be honest with you because it's very uh, personal as well. Like depends on how, you, how, what kind of shapes you want to make. You know what I mean? Yes. Let me, let me actually look at this new project. Uh, hold on a second. How do you know when to stop with the references? Because I started and then two hours later, I'm still looking at. A, a ton of images on pinterest that's or okay. whatever that's good and then it's just that's good takes you... ages before i start something and oh. then i'm oh I'm, it's this long i'm tired i have to wake up in the morning so i'm just gonna go to bed yeah of course it takes time i mean you cannot uh, look at two hours of references and then start making something so i mean the references that i gathered right i mean i was just looking at these tons of references like vitali for example right a lot of Vitaly stuff. These are like so many good artists out there. I mean, you see, like I was like looking at different muscle muscle shaped um, like pieces, but robotic, right? But the thing is, uh, it's okay if you look at many shapes. But what I would recommend is this. Um, I mean. Let's say you want to design an arm, right? 
get a bunch of ARM reference, and because you haven't done this before, just sit there and sculpt the stuff. Like, what you can do if you want to make the arm, I would say, I think for me, um, if I go back to this, I might actually start with the anatomy, right? Because at the arm, you have the deltoid muscles, you have the biceps, you have different shapes, right? The proportions is there and everything. Then you can say, okay, I want to have a guard here. Maybe this muscle could be a pump or something. Maybe this is a piston, you know, try different shapes. And it's not going to come easy. You shouldn't expect yourself to make a character and design something and make a character immediately, if you know what I mean. It's more yes. about like uh, practicing a lot, like making a, sh a strong shape library in your brain. Because the more you do, the more you learn. And one of the things actually I say to everyone is this. Uh, fail fast uh, and try different shapes. Fail fast means this actually. It means you, you try a piece of armor here. Let's say I want to turn this into an armor for the shoulder, right? I'm just like, maybe I can pick the pinch brush, okay? And then make something here. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just testing this stuff, okay? Make something here. Okay. And then maybe this could be the armor piece on the back. I don't know what I'm doing, okay? It doesn't matter if it's good or bad. I'll try my best to make a nice shape, but the only way you can do it is like if you put a bunch of shape together and then compare them uh, to see if like uh, the proportions are there, like basically the, like if you're using a good composition for the design, you know? And So it's basically just quick tests to yes. see what's working and what you like. Exactly. And look at this. Like when I made this, automatically I put this on the one, like on the golden ratio. This shape, whatever it is, I know what it is. I'm just like putting something. And then to, because I'm not, I don't have a good library of, um, you know, like if you ask me to make muscles like a creature, I can, I can do it. This is actually not bad. It's okay. Um, like if I want to make a creature with weird muscles, I can do it because I understand anatomy. I can do that faster than making a robot. But if I start, this is actually one of the things I want to do. If I start making robots uh, and try many shapes and understand the, um, basically have a good understanding of the robotic shapes or the details that go through a robot, like, I don't know, what is this, for example? Or looking at Mike, Nash, uh, Mike Nash's work, for example, or even Vitaly, right? I mean, what are these? What are these, you know, what's happening here? You know, these kind of shapes. And you can try it um, on your model and see where you can add it. The, the thing is like, you, when you design something, you need to have, you need to focus more on the primary shapes and then the secondary shapes. So if you focus on that, come up with something nice, okay? And then um, maybe it's disconnected here. And then maybe I have, maybe I have something else here. You follow the anatomy. Maybe I have another shape here that is whatever it is. I don't know what it is. And then maybe I can, um, maybe I can change something here. Maybe I can become more creative. Okay and then overlap these. Does it make sense so far? Yes. But it's not good yet, right? Um, what you can do, here's the thing. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard this quote from Thomas Edison. He says, I never failed. I actually learned um, 10,000 ways that doesn't work, that don't work, right? Because he practiced, he did a lot of like um, trial and error until he, he found how to make a light bulb. So if he didn't do that, he wouldn't be able to make it. So this is the same thing. You can, you can try to practice. You can study a lot of like 
um, I don't know, design books or look at others, other artists work like Vitali or, um, you know, Mike Nash or Ido Grazio and then see what they do. And then you, you can try your own ideas to come, come up with, a with different other shapes, you know, this is actually not bad. I, I mean, I can, I can change this and make it look cool. And honestly, if I want to make it into a robotic suit on a character. Is that what you want to do or is it like is it, it's a mix of robots and humans? Um, it, it would be a human with um, some sort of suit and mm -hmm. armor to, to maybe go be out in space and be able to breathe as well. But uh -huh. it needs to be modular and also work in battle with bits and pieces that can come up, uh, come off and be swapped with other pieces yes. depending on the tasks that this um, character would have. First of all, I would say don't make it too complicated for yourself, okay? Uh, like you say, swap, swapping pieces. Uh, I don't know if, if you want to focus on that. I think first it's better if you focus on the art, you know, designing, and then on the way understand how you can make pieces um, work together. You know what I mean? Like modular. Because mm -hmm. modularity is a big yes. topic. It's, it's not an easy thing to do. And depending no. on the design you want to you wanna make, you can change it. Um, so I would say focus on, 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 on the, um, like this could be a suit and a guy, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing wrong with that. There is actually a lot, a lot of things wrong with this, but I'm just saying like, I'm just trying something randomly without even looking at references, you know, this could be a suit on top of the armor because maybe they remove their skin on this guy, or maybe they are born in a condition that they don't have a skin and his, their muscles are exposed. So they need to have a specific suit to basically cover their muscle shapes, right? Maybe, maybe that's, this is the future, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully not, <laughs> but <laughs> um, let's see. Um, maybe I can add something extra here. What if you think about modularity, you could think about mounting points or anything. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Modularity is not an easy topic. And then you see what I mean? So I can take this guy and turn it into a, into a sci-fi character. Like, I don't know anything about chess. Let's look at a chess, sci-fi chess. I'm gonna, um, let's, let's look at this for five minutes, 10 minutes and then finish it. Cause I might actually give you bad advice if I'm not understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is great. Thank you so much no for all the time and all the answers and no the worries. examples. Thank you. Sure. Let's actually see what I want to look at some chest design. There are different ways to design a chest. Marco Plof. Let's look at this guy. This guy is very good. Actually, Marco. Do you know him? Um, I don't good. think so. Okay, you should know him. Check his work because he's he's doing a very good job. He's a very good artist. Um, he has a design that I really like. This one is very cool. This is very cool, right? I mean, you can oh, use, yeah. you can use negative space to have something on top of the you know shape instead of flat. Like I could even do something like that for for my design or. There's like many ways that you can actually design a character. See how cool it is. But I mean, maybe this is the space suit you want to make, make actually, right? I mean, I don't know what this is, but probably he knows why he, he made those pieces. Um, so let me see if I can do something for the chest. I'm just curious for myself. Are you going to have any more classes for characters in the future? Because I would love to join, but I don't have the time right now on this yes, turn. So I will. I'll always have classes. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm just trying to make something here cool. I don't know. Uh, the other thing is, did you watch my, do you watch my YouTube channel or you don't? 
I saw some videos recently. Okay. There is and one I, I thought did... they were very nice. Thank you. There is one with Mike Nash. He actually was working on my character concept, the, the robot. And he was trying to fix his stuff. Because he's, he's the master of this, right? So I would say check that out. It might actually give you some good idea about like designing some of these things, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm just like... I... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, please. No, Sorry. no, it's okay. It's okay. I'm listening. Go ahead. Um, I actually... I can't... I'm... Well, you have your classes now, and he has his starting soon, yes. and oh, I've no, signed up for his, that's why I can't join yours, and I was that's wondering, fine. are <laughs> that's you fine. going <laughs> That's fine. Hold on a second, let me close the window here, someone is like, messing up with my <laughs> noise. Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry, did you join Mike Nash's class? Yes, I that's signed great. up for it. That is for great, it. actually. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, that's a that's definitely a very good decision. You will not regret it. I'm pretty sure about that. Oh, I'm oh. I'm I'm very very <laughs> excited about this. <laughs> yeah, when did you sign up for it? Recently? Yeah, this week. Oh, okay, cool. That's good. What made you to do? Because I thought, mm, I thought about it a bit, and I thought, well, okay, I'm because I'm. I'm employed, so I'm working, and it would it might be a bit tricky yeah. to find the time and juggle between the working hours and this. But I thought it it must be worth it. I'm doing it. God damn it! Yeah, it's good. It's good. And the thing is, um, uh, did you did you know him from the past, or did you see him on a podcast or a YouTube channel? I'm just like curious how you found him. Did, were you his fan? Um, I knew about him because oh, in cool. the past there were. He had some models, and he's got a very recognizable style. Yes, yes. And then at some point, I think I saw a Facebook post about classes. Yes. And then I saw you guys starting having videos on YouTube. And I yeah. thought, oh, this is cool. Because <laughs> I kind of feel a bit stuck on what I'm doing right now. Because yeah. for the past years, I've been doing just stuff for, for money, for paying the bills and all that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I, I want to do something else. I want to move on and get back to what I like most. I think that's more important than money, to be honest with you, because that's that, mm -hmm. that, way, that way you will make more money. You know, actually, I want to tell you something. You see how because I'm doing a lot of organic characters, when I even try to make armors, they look organic. Uh, <laughs> you see what I mean? Like it looks like a muscle piece. <laughs> it's different than <laughs> right. So I guess every person is different. This might actually make me to design, start designing robotic stuff. Mm. I want to get into it. Is there... yeah, it's very important. Yeah. yeah. I still want to learn about characters as well, and I've started learning anatomy. Mm -hmm. But I really, really miss modeling, so that's why I picked that course instead of this one. With the... No, no, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. Uh, he's my friend, and I think that's a very good decision you made, to be honest with you. He's, he's a very good... Uh, like, I actually had a couple of chat with him, like he was showing me how to design his stuff. One of them is on YouTube. He actually showed me stuff um, that actually made me think about my design more, to be honest. Like, uh, you know, Vitaly is like that too. I, I spoke to him like last year, a couple of hours, he was showing me how to design his stuff. And it actually changed my mindset. Like, just by talking, but ju just by talking, he actually gave me some really good designing tips. But you see what I'm doing now, I'm just like playing around, you know? Like, I don't like mm -hmm. this shape because it's, like, weird. Maybe this should go all the way. Maybe this. So I'm just pr playing, playing around. And you can look at references. Get some ideas, you know. I mean, there are tons yeah. of references out there. A lot of references. Everything, everyone is different. Like, Vitaly is different. He's adding this weird, very cool edges. Maybe I could do that in this guy. Maybe I could just look at that. Maybe this could be like. Do you do yeah. paint overs for yourself when you're working on something? No. Taking just... screenshots and then. No, just ZBrush. You don't need to. I mean, the thing is like the, um, the key to learning something is simplicity. Like the more simple, the better. You know what I mean? Like, just try to find a, yes. the simplest way to reach your uh, goal, basically. And and even designing the simple, the the more I mean, simple shapes, but logical shapes. You know, like 
If you look at the SpaceX suit that they designed for space, um, SpaceX suit. Look at that. There's, it's very cool, but it's very simple. You see what you see what I mean? Oh yeah. Would you buy? Um, let me show you something quickly. Which one would you buy, iPhone or BlackBerry? Which one is cooler? <laughs> I do miss buttons. What's that? Oh, you miss buttons? Well, ignore yes. that. But, but which one you like more? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the simple one. Of course, because it's cool. It's easy to to look at. This is like too much, like uh, even a Tesla car, Tesla. Three interior model three. I mean, is this better or? Um, actually, love Tesla. I have a Tesla myself. It's the best car. I mean, Mercedes. So this is the. I mean, this is too much for me when I look at it. It Which is. is. It feels a bit like a plane. <laughs> yes. Which one is better? <laughs> yeah, the Tesla. Definitely. Yeah. I'd pick the Tesla. Exactly. So that's the thing. Like, for, even when you design, you don't have to, like, Vitaly is good because look at it. Like, um, maybe I can draw on this one. Yeah. He has, like, a, like big shapes here, right? big shapes and then he has some smaller shapes and then some small details look at the ratio of it right some tertiary details then he has a big shape right and then just some lines uh, it's it's not complicated it's just like he's using uh, he's using the shapes and details really well but it's not like 2000 different armor pieces I, that's why i like his designs uh, really well i mean a lot to be honest with you or even even mm -hmm. um I was talking to Mike Nash last night, and even we talk every day almost now. Mike Nash, at the station. Mike is like his recent his recent designs. I actually like what he did in, the, in this motorbike. This, he just did it very quickly. Um, but these are cool. I really like these ones. It's repetitive, but it's very cool. You know. I like this one a lot. This one is very cool. I mean, if you look at it, it, he doesn't have many details, you know, like there's a big shape here. There's like something like a panel, like, I don't know, like a ventilator or something. There's like some small shapes. There's like something here, right? So <clears throat> it's mostly big shapes with some cuts and then a few screws and things like that. But the overall language of the design is very cool. You know what I mean? Yes. So I think that's more important than um, adding a lot of details. I might actually save this because I feel like I can make something out of this. I want to be able to <laughs> turn this into something cool. <laughs> <laughs> you made me to start something new. Um, okay. okay. All right. So I don't know if that answered your question. It did. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm glad that I could help. Um, I guess we can finish it. Uh, I think John is left. He's not there anymore. Let's finish it, guys. I am tired. And then we'll, I will do live on my... Here. What's that? I'm still here. Oh, I, I thought the hurricane took you with himself. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's coming in and out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Glad. So just go... Um, Raymond, you're welcome, man. Thank you. I don't know if you're a man or, or a woman. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, dude, uh, I guess we can finish it. If people have more questions, I will do live as well sometimes on YouTube. Maybe I'll, I, I'm thinking to do one tomorrow. I will try to answer more questions like that. Um, I don't know what else. That's it. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I hope it, Thank it you was so useful. Much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Do you think it was useful, John, and everyone? Yeah, I think you were awesome.
That's great. Thank you. I am yeah, awesome, man. man. No one is like me. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, buddy. This was great. <laughs> sure, I you're open. welcome. You're welcome. All right, guys. Should I pause it and finish it? Yeah, yeah. You can end the end the session. All right, great. See you guys. Bye, bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. This conference bye. is no longer being recorded.